Well, hello, everyone. Good day. Good morning. Good whatever's going on. Glad that you guys are here. Uh, I decided to do a show, a quick one, I guess to try to get myself back into doing the shows. But I decided to do a show based upon the stalking individuals to prove a point. Now, the stalking individuals spent all the time in this other show talking about me saying, why won't you answer our questions? I said, well, why don't you call when my show is live? So, hmm, I'm looking and I just wanted to make sure that I understood and everyone else understood what's going on. That you have a bunch of people who claim they have an issue with me. They have things to talk about. Well, right now I'm going to show you guys how many people are on the phones right now. Would you guys like to see how many people are on my phone lines right now? Would you like to see it? I'm going to show it to you. See that? Look at that. A list of callers will appear when people call into your episode. See how many people are on the line right now? Now, those guys were sitting there. All, he, all you have is the host, Soto Nation. You see, that's me. So they can hear me. Anybody that's over there can hear me. If any of you would like to uh, dial the number that you see on the screen to make sure that it's live so that I, you know I'm not lying, you can. You can call and you can uh, you can see if it works. See if your name pops up. I'm not your name, but not your number. Don't don't. Oh, crap. Your number. I had to delete it. But now you can call in and make sure that you can see. I'm, I apologize to the, the, the brother who just did that. I wasn't even thinking until I was like, oh, shit, the number call up. The number comes up. But you see how Mr. Roy, who always wants to talk about taking a shower. You see how uh, Free or whatever his name is. I forgot the other guy named Free something. Huh. So they got all those questions and I just typed over there in the chat room. I said, man, it's funny. No phone calls. How does that work? Yeah. Weirdo talk. Weirdo talk. My daughter's 12 now. Do you know what they keep talking about? You took a shower with your daughter. My daughter's 12 now. Now, if I say I have a degree, they say that's not true. If I say I help the homeless, they say that's not true. If I say I slept with a man, they'll say, he said he slept with a man. It's obviously true. So then my next question would be, how do they pick and choose what comes out of my mouth that's true and what's false? I get it now. They pick and choose by doing this. If it's something they can use against me, then it's true. If it's something that makes me look good, then it's false. Uh, one of them just said, I'm calling now, Crispy. One of the stalkers by the name of Roy Rodriguez. But as you can see, he's not called. How does that work? So a Roy Rodriguez can call me crispy and what's going on right now and i just want you guys to see it again not one phone call he calling now crispy that's what he wrote because i'm black and crispy okay somebody just called in let me see who that is i'm going to answer them as they come in okay. hello caller hey this is don tavis nice uh, I'll have a question. Sure. Okay, so as a young man that's um, undecided in college, I would like to um, hear about your past um, decision on your major. 
Like, why did you choose the major that you um I fell into my majors. I, I'll be honest. I fell what? into my majors. I fell into them. When I went to school, I was going to be a what? CE. I wanted to be a chemical engineer. Yes. That didn't work. Who inspired you? I'll, I, here's the thing. I grew up loving Georgia Tech because I had a cousin who played basketball at Georgia Tech. So I wanted to go to Georgia Tech. Mm-hmm. So when you figure out about schools, you say, well, those are all engineers. I felt I was mathematically superior to a lot of people. And Google Google my info and you'll find out why. But for some odd reason, like I'm good at math, but I'm bad at accounting. I'm good at engineering, but it wasn't for feeling. And then when they were like, well, you know, the only way you can get a, the only real place you'll get a job is in uh, the, the public sector. You have to work for the government. I don't want to work for the government. For so I uh, spoke spoke to my um at my my um counselor, my advisor, and my advisor said something to me. Said you have a great voice. You ever thought about going into communications? I didn't even know that was a field. And then as I went and looked at things in communications, psychology came up. So at that point, I said that. So that's how I got put on the path. It was accidental. I knew nothing about either one of them before I went there. I thought I was going to be an engineer. That didn't work out well for me. Okay. Okay. That's what it was. A lot of times in life, you think you have an idea of what you want to do, and then life gives you another, gives you another path. Well, I'm still undecided. I'm thinking of um, getting a trade, an apprenticeship. Either I want to be a welder or he and cooling type of. um, profession that's what i'm looking at towards hopefully in the future okay well um here's the thing life is all about testing the waters if it feels comfortable to you or the idea the thought of that because i have to remember when i was in elementary school i knew i was going to be an astronaut that didn't work <laughs> yeah i mean yeah <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> I had cousins. I remember we made a pact. We'd never do drugs. I got some in jail right now from selling drugs and some in hell right now because they overdid the drug. Mm. Okay. I went to college in order for me to get through college. I did some things that were, uh, you, 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 you just gotta, you, you, you just, life deals you a hand and sometimes you just, Got to play it. Yep. So <laughs> that's the best fact. I can tell you. Oh, okay. So um, you didn't. Re- so the last time I paid you, you didn't really give me an actual number that you wanted me to reach. And you, um, I want you to talk about the what people d- don't talk about is the sexual assault of young boys, black boys, or. Any race of boys in general, how it's not talked about. How about that? I how haven't about, how about you this? yet. How about we, I'm getting around to it. Well, how about this? <laughs> well, how about we do this? This week, I will do a special show about that. And I want you to email me to keep reminding me. I'll either do it tomorrow or I will do it before Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. I will do it before Wednesday. So we can get into that conversation. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. That is not, thank you. And uh, uh, do somebody I need to just, take the one to get off this thing? Well, yeah. Well, somebody just uh, sent a message too, and I hope you um, will listen to this. They said you can also learn how to weld and do HVAC in the military. So instead of having to pay, you can get paid for that same lesson. Uh, I don't think they will let me enter the military. I have a, a disability with the hands, so I don't oh. know they will, you know. I understand. I understand. I understand. Yeah, Terry. I don't think I passed the physical exam, but the, I, I. But thanks to whoever that said that. Yeah, no problem. That's why I do enjoy the people in the audience, and thank you so much for the phone call. I do enjoy the audience because a lot of times when questions like this come up, people in the audience either went through it, know something about it, and there is some synergy about this. That's why um, the well, it's open. So you guys can talk about that. And um, let me see. Hold on a second. Let me get to something right quick. That's why I don't have the thing up that says donate. But 
It would be nice if you did click that donate button. As a matter of fact, some people have donated when I wasn't looking. So let me go back to, I'm going to go all the way back to May 19th. May 19th, Diana P donated. So the day's the 20th. So she said, thank you for the show tonight. But I didn't do a show on the 19th, did I? No, yesterday was the 19th. I didn't do a show. Maybe she went back and watched the show. Then we have One West Clothing and mag- Magazines. Awesome. One West Clothing. If you are listening or you catch the playback, you need to advertise with the website. So since you donated that much, I don't mind uh, letting you advertise on the website. Oh, and for all the people who are wondering about the website, the website is going to be back up. I'm just getting it transferred and making sure we can, because ha- I know you guys are having a problem, but I'm going to get it fixed, hopefully within the next day or, or two. Um, but One West Clothing said, just a little something from One West Boulevard on IG, Rod Witt on Facebook, and Mr. Ben Benzo Boulevard on your website. Much love and support you 100%. Then we got, oh crap, I did something wrong. Okay, there we go. Uh, Danny T on the 19th as well. Donated. So I get uh, Jacqueline. Wow. Jacqueline sent me $100 uh, on the 19th. Thank you, Jacqueline. Jacqueline Y. Yama. I'm not going to say the rest, but you that, that should let you know who you are. Corey S. said, hopes this helps. Then we have uh, from my man Thomas C. He sent in a donation. 15 bucks. Jamie B. This is all on the 19th. What was going on the 19th? DeMarco L. Another one on the 19th. Derek J. Said he was showing support. This was on the 20th. Says, I've only been following for a year. I've learned and grown so much. Words cannot explain how grateful I am uh, to all of the work that you do. I just wanted to say thank you, brother, and I will continue to donate as much as I can. I don't have it like some of your other supporters. A wife and, and three kids are not cheap. Thank you again. Hey, brother, I understand. Look, if people did something as all oh, the school shooting, but I still thought that was two days. I did do the school school shooting yesterday. I guess I did. Well, thank you, Jamie. Jamie said they donated whether they, what I'm on or not. So that's awesome. KCG donated tonight or excuse me, this morning. Stanford de Griffin Reed. It's my dude. He donated uh, tonight. And and Nick Y said two dollar holla. He donated. So two people donated tonight. So thank you. But it would be nice if uh, those of you who are watching click one of those donate links. It would be awesome if you can. Oh, man, somebody, show, they're showing me pictures, uh, Starmore. They're out here cuffing the same women you disrespecting. Oh, listen, I, somebody sent a picture of, um, I guess, a black woman who put up um, a picture of Meghan Markle uh, and um, three other white random dudes with black women. And each one of them, I just want you to look at the polls that these white boys have with these black women and you tell me how much they respect these so-called black queens i i want you guys opinion on this and then i'm gonna go to the phone lines again this is the picture that the young lady wanted to put up to prove to the world that they out here cuffing black women this is how they cuffing black women Look at that picture on the bottom left. Look at how square that white boy look. Look at the white boy on the top. Look at how black chicks show all kind of love to their white boyfriend. Don't look at it. Every time a black chick get a white boyfriend, he'd be all over her Instagram. She'd be kissing on him, talking about how grateful and how how better her life is that she met him. Y'all ever notice that? And no matter what evil that white boy do to him, they won't talk about it. After they done bigged up that white boy, when he do all kind of evil to him, 
Do you think they go and talk about him like they talk about us? Nope. They keep that on a on the tuck. All right, now I'm going to go to the phone lines. The phone lines are open, 213-943-3362. Going to go right down the list and answer the phone calls. If you want to talk, make sure you press the one to let me know that you want to speak. The topics are open. I just literally opened the lines for two trolls. Let's see if this is one of them. 217, caller, you're on the air. Hi. Hi, Tommy. How are you? I'm well. Who am I speaking with? What is your talking point? My topic is actually on. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. What are you sorry? I'm for? actually a fan of yours, and I'm sorry. Why are you um, sorry? Um, my name is Josh, and I'm from Champaign, Illinois. Uh, no problem. What is your topic? Uh, you were just talking about the royal wedding. What is your opinion about that? Well, I wanted to do a show on that tomorrow, so I wanted to kind of keep that on the tuck. But people know generally my. What I'm going to talk about tomorrow is how black women look really stupid because they're going around praising this and no (laughs) other group is doing it. Think about it. No other group is doing this. Number one, when I was in uh, high school and college, I only dated light skinned girls. I had no interest in dark skinned girls at all. I got called a wow. um, I got called a um, color struck. So I'm I'm confused Uh. at why these same black women are big upping this woman who looks nothing black at all. She doesn't look black at all. That is if totally black true. men dated this woman, have, they would say the black men were self-haters. So how the fuck can they now gravitate towards this woman and cheer because this woman who looks nothing like them got a white man? Hell, if every black woman looked like Meghan Markle, they wouldn't be considered the ugliest group of women in the, in a, in the world. Seriously, they wouldn't. And, and that's not me I being funny. Do. If every black woman looked like her, black women would not be considered the ugliest group in America. You wouldn't have to spend a bunch of money on weave because it'd grow out of her own damn head. (laughs) Let me tell you something, You wouldn't have to lighten up photos so their face would show up because the bitch can be shown up in any lighting. She wouldn't have to do all (laughs) kinds of... This is what you'd get if they all looked like Megan. You know how proud go, black men would be if their women all looked like Meghan Markle. If they all looked like this, they, they wouldn't have these mammies on TV. We will all date them. We will all date them. Yes. We will date them. We, you, you we would, would date them. Most of the Hell, how about this? If they act like Meghan. The black bitches who putting up photos of Ma- Man, you're going to make me get in the tomorrow night show. I'm not doing it. You're trying to get me to get into the tomorrow night show. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm sorry, but. You know, I'm not. I'm sorry, but I was just wondering because I saw so many people praising, and it wasn't just black women. It was it was it was white women too. And I understand you don't like that argument, but I saw so many people. They were praising this woman. Mm-hmm. And one thing about it is that she's not black. The only reason why they're praising her is because she came from a black woman. Complete reason. That is the only what, reason. What's messed up is her daddy was it, white, and her daddy didn't want to have shit to do with her. her just like most bl- most men who exactly. deal with black women, after a while, you just duck the fuck out. This man that left her with this mixed breed, he done ducked the fuck out. She <laughs> had, You don't hit, see her daddy walking her down the motherfucking aisle. Her daddy didn't give her the fuck away. You, you don't. You, no, you did not. No, you, I saw so many pictures of it. I did not see her father. Right, and guess what? Her, her dad anyway. has never said. Guess what? She's never said about herself. That What's she, that? That she's black. No matter how many times You're they right. ask her, she will not say she's black. <laughs> Yet black women keep calling this woman nope. black. Yeah, black women call the woman black. Um, but see, there's another problem though. I'm also hearing rumors that she has some royalty in her. Do you think that's true? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that royal dude fucked her before, so she didn't have a few royals in her. But it, I don't think it's from the black woman, though. It has to be from her father. Nah, I was no saying, I, I don't know if she got any of it in her. I was saying the only royalty she got in her, they probably let all them all the damn dudes run a train on her before she came. You know how white boys do. White boy's gonna be like, all oh, my brothers well, gotta taste this this black pussy first. They they put you through. White boys will put you through the ringer. 
Yeah. I give white boys credit. Well, if they done touched your girl, they done did some damage to that motherfucker. Them white boys, they they trying all kind of crap. Oh. I give white boys credit. When I was yeah. in college and, and I found and I saw what them white dudes was doing to them black chicks, I said, Oh, this is disgusting. I literally at that moment <laughs> said, That's why I try to let if black women, if I date a black woman, I tell them, Don't tell me you done dated a white boy, because now I got that picture of what this white boy made you do. Just keep your dating past in the past. <laughs> I don't want to hear that shit. I don't. <laughs> I don't. Every time a woman tell me she dated a white boy, I'm like, oh, God. Oh, God. This nigga had you fucking the horse outside. He came in your hair and shit. That white boy oh done stuck a corn God. cob in your ass and made you stick one in his ears. You had to fuck everybody in his frat. Stop it, Tommy. We did. <laughs> White boys don't play when it comes to sex. They don't. Tom. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Tommy. I've never had sex, but. <laughs> white oh boys the goodness. realest when it comes to sex. Watch white porn and watch black porn. The black dude just sit up there and be dancing and rapping and fuck. Watch what them white boys do. They be spitting your face, slap the shit out of you, <laughs> make you eat your own feces. God, dog. White boys don't play. Oh my goodness, Tommy, stop it. I want to. I actually want to talk about another topic. <laughs> I'm just saying. But, but seriously, but seriously, I actually want to talk about another topic though. If, if that's totally fine with you, I'll be quick. Well, well, I've also been told, I, <clears throat> when it comes down to the uh, single black motherhood, single black motherhood and uh, things like that. Oh, what? No, wait, no, wait, wait, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Wrong topic. Um, still on Meghan Markle and mixed people in general. People always say that the one drop rule, people still believe in that one drop rule, that if you have, that if you have, um, one drop of black blood, you're considered black. Mm -hmm. Well, and also how you know how society society will view you as black. Well, what do you, what is your argument against that? Okay, well, I'll give you an argument of why I understand why white people are for it. Let me explain this to you. White people don't want the trash yeah. in their community. They believe anything mixed with any kind of black, they don't want to accept it. So they put that rule on blacks. Blacks ate the rule I up see. because blacks want to be um, attached to white people in some form. That's why you can find most black people telling right. you they got white in their family, but you don't find white people saying they got black in their family. If that many whites got, if that yeah. many blacks got white in their family, then by common sense, that many whites would have that would have black in theirs too. So why is it that blacks are always claiming yeah. everybody else, but nobody else is claiming them? All these blacks got Indian in them, but none of these Indians got black in them. <laughs> I think, I think because we have an inferiority complex to try to be white, so we can't be anything else but white because, well, the majority of the population is white, so we try to be like that person. Mm -hmm. So that's why every time I see a dark skin, every time I see a dark skin woman, she always said, "Well, I got Turkish in my family, or I yep. got." Um, Ukrainian in my family, or um, I got Egyptian in my family. Dark skinned bitches weird, will but... claim, hey brother, dark skinned bitches will claim they got white in them quicker than a, than, a, than a light skin or a mixed chick will. Dead ass. A mixed chick will tell you, yep. I'm black. Yep. You gotta ask her, well, will you yep. mix what? with something? Yeah. A black chick will be as dark as this damn <laughs> as my wallet. And she'll tell you she got it's European in her and all kinds of crap. And I'm like, where is it at? Is it microscopic? <laughs> well, you had a European rub up against you? Fight. What's happening? This you got some strong got ass genes. We got to magnify the uh, mixture um, <laughs> 500,000 times to see, to see if you're actually mixed with something. All right, you talk about oh, you mixed with something. Yeah, black and navy. <laughs> black and navy. Oh my goodness, Tommy. Oh, black and navy. Oh my goodness. But I want to let you know because I know you have other phone callers to go to. 
I'm a big fan of yours. I'm a big, big fan of yours. And don't worry about the haters. But I do, I do have one more question. Can you give me a on my dead daddy and a point blank purr? I can do that on my dead daddy. You know what I mean? Point blank purr. Point blank purr. I'm the coldest thing out here answering phone calls right now. <laughs> and just so y'all know, I will not be answering any phone call where you blocked your number because you don't want to talk to me bad enough. If you blocked your number, you're already trolling. You think I'm going to let you troll and block your number too? Nah, I'm good on that one. Brandon, thank you, brother. Brandon donated via Venmo. That is awesome. I like that Venmo, but I haven't taken any money out of it because I don't technically know how it works. But I'm pretty sure it's safe there. I ain't going to shut down Venmo tomorrow. Next thing I know, I get an email. Venmo has been shut down. <laughs> ah, we got a couple more people donated. Diana P donated again tonight. My man Terry E says, keep pressing on. And my man Nicholas M sending a donation. So three out of the. Five, six hundred donated. Thank you. Three out of the five, six hundred. That is an awesome deal. I right, let me go to the phone lines again. But for those people who are in there and you got you press that star six nine or whatever you did, I'm not talking to you. Cause I know you full of shit. You don't have a real discussion to have. Six oh one, caller, you're on the air. What's up? What's going on, bro? Long time caller, man. Long time listener. How's it going? It's going good. Talk to me. What's on your mind? What subject you want to bring up? Stay away a little now, bit from uh, Meghan from Markle, advice, though, man. if you guys can. Stay away from that because I want to talk about that in its own show. Oh, man, anybody think about that, bitch. Uh, <laughs> but this, this, this is the thing, man. Uh, <laughs> this is the thing. Seriously, we got to do something to change these laws out here, man. Um, quick thing that happened to me um, a while ago. <clears throat> well, I'm saying about a month ago. Um, found out I had some charges pressed against me. Um, I'm in Mississippi, by the way. Mm -hmm. And the charges, bogus charges, over some Facebook crap. Uh, dude had his wife press all these bogus charges. And uh, when I went down to uh, get a field release and, uh, you know, turn myself in so I can get a court date, the lady at the window told me, in Mississippi, you are guilty until proven innocent. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was the other way around. You are innocent until proven guilty. But here in Mississippi... Anybody can go down and press charges against you, and you are automatically guilty until your court date until you can prove it. That's crazy. Listen, when you talk about men, they actually do treat us this way, that you're automatically yeah. guilty until you prove yourself innocent. There's been man after man after man that has found himself languishing in jail for years. I just saw a story early today about a white man who had been in jail for 11 years. He didn't do anything. He was mm. in jail for 11 years. They finally let him out because they found out he didn't do it. They had evidence showing he didn't do it, but he lost 11 years of his life. And when he got out, the people still believe he did it. So his life is still screwed up after losing 11 years of his life. But do you think anybody gives a crap? Not at all. You know, it's, it's, it's messed up, man, because, the person that, that did it to me, um, he had his wife to do it um, so he can get his name out of it. The thing, I, I, and I guess it's for the, the, the sympathy role, too. Um, you know, it's, it's been plastered all over Facebook uh, about what what I'm uh, alleged, you know, have, have happened. And it's like it's, I have no recourse until we go to court and I prove myself innocent. Then I can uh, press charges against her. For I guess what is that uh, false charges or something like that? But I have or, or perjury. Uh, I gotta ask the judge what what is my recourse because I don't know what to do. I, I know I have all the evidence to prove that I'm that I'm innocent, but I mean at this point in the game, I just gotta wait for court. Man, this is the way the system is set up. Man, it is not set up for us to win at all. Exactly, it's set at up all. for us to con to constantly lose, man. And I want to say I'm sorry for you, but. I don't know if you know, maybe like three weeks ago, a bitch on YouTube was able to get the police to come out to my damn house. What? Yeah. A bitch named Paris Malone was able to get the police to come to my house. I mean, off of a phone call? Yep. <laughs> I wish we had that type of pool, man. Mm-hmm. 
a phone call. Now, but I ain't gonna hold you, man. Rants. I just want to see what what you you know what you what your thoughts on that, man. The system is just jacked up, man. And you know, keep uh, persevering, man, in what you're doing. Um, when you're not on, man, you know, uh, we miss you. So keep doing what you're doing, bro. And um, you know, just 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 keep on keeping on. Well, thank you. And if y'all want to see me more, click that donate button. More. And I'm still waiting on them faggots to call, but they haven't. That's a weird thing. You had all that to say, and now you don't have anything to say. Hmm. And you have no right to sit up here and call my phone, and then you're going to block your number and start talking shit about me. No. So you, matter of fact, I'm going to kick every one of you who have a block number off. You figure out what you want to do after that. Five oh one, caller, you're on the air. What's going on, bro? Not much. Talk to me. What's your topic? Yeah, I don't even know. To be honest, I wanted to bring up that nigga Marco topic, but you don't want to talk about that. But yeah, because that's a that's say, a separate show. I comment. It's a separate <laughs> show. I don't want to bury it. You know. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to bury it yeah. in this show. Yeah, I, I get it. But um, so do you still make music or something like that? Or yes, I do old. make cook. I'm, I do make music, and I I like my music. Uh, it ain't that good, but you know. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I well, <laughs> hey, well, I got beats and stuff. You know, I'm a producer. I'm trying to get them out there, stuff like that. Well, send me some of them, man. Uh, Especially so when I move where, and where get you settled. Them when I get settled, I'm through with the summer. I'm gonna put out some. I'm gonna straight stop and put out some music when I get through. Putting out the movie and uh, do my little tour in the summer. I'm just gonna do music and jack off fuck. like every day. You think you think I can get some soundtrack on a movie if you if it's not too late or whatever? Nah, it's not too late. I gotta put together a little soundtrack. I'm gonna put together a little small soundtrack. So if anybody got music that they want to put I mean, on, we can I put do, together all a I do is hip hop. So yeah, we'll yeah. do that. Yeah. So where do you want the beat sent to? TJ at yourworldmyviews.com. Okay. So, um, what else? All right. There's something else I wanted to talk about. Before I got off, you know, uh-huh. I, don't, I kind of don't even know what to talk about, but, you know, that's you know, all right. I, I've been really commenting. So, Go ahead. Yeah. So, sometimes I've been commenting on things, you know, just to, just to piss everybody off. I do, I do exactly what you do for some reason. Cause like when you know I said something about like when white when uh, when a black man I mean a white man touch a black woman it's like they praise it but then for you know what I'm saying like mm-hmm. they love the white is, people I don't get it because they love white people I mean, I'm sorry right, look at black know, women black women are trying to emulate <laughs> white women then they'll get mad when a white woman can <laughs> out black woman them. They get mad when a white woman look better in braids than they do because she didn't have to add Bad some ass. extra hair in her head. She just used her own hair and braided it. <laughs> they get pissed off because white women can. If white women wanted to act ratchet, they'd do a better job at acting ratchet than black chicks do. The Catch Me Outside girl was at least smarter than the average black bitch because she got paid. And they ain't jealous of her, huh? Oh, uh, Kim Kardashian her. did better than the average black bitch because she got rich. Man, I just don't see what, what one is a problem. Like, I just don't understand black females, their logic in general. Like, okay, you know, like, they always fuck over you. Like, I ain't talking about all, you know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, we're not talking all, about all of them. We like hope that, fuck over you, say this, they I get mad at you making status. Yeah, we'll hope that the black women watch and understand that? that we're not talking about all of them. But if you're sitting up there and you figure, if you don't have enough common sense to know I'm not talking about all of you, then I don't need you here anyway. <laughs> yeah, but um, they, um, they fuck over you, but then if you... Like, if you say something about it, they'll get pissed off. And then, what am I trying to say? Hold on, Tommy. I got to think, man. But it's all right, man. You got it. Look, I I feel what you're saying. Get your comments together for tomorrow night show. I think I'll do it tomorrow night or tomorrow afternoon. I'm not 100 percent sure. I got about a website. Yeah. um, Well, wait a second, because the website is acting a fool right now. The website is acting a fool, but we'll get you on. What I'm going to do is put you on hold right now. Uh, My man's uh, Skohar talked about 
the damn Rockets game. I didn't even watch that shit. I just saw that score at the end. 41 points. You, are, I could have got together four niggas and we could have stayed that close. Speaking of some of my music, before I go on to the next phone call, here's some of my music now. Mr. Man is better, Mr. Man is better, uh, Gia. Uh, and y'all know how it go. So check it down, uh, This goes out to my niggas that got a couple holes that they wanna hit. Do like me, fill a head full of nonsense. Cause best believe I be lying to bitches. Late night on the phone, straight crying to bitches. Talking about how I love them and never gonna let them go. But yo, bitch, I don't love you, hope so yo. You should've known from the jump in the giddy up that all a nigga wanted to do was get him a nut. Now I'm out of 5,000. Ain't trying to buy that bitch, I'm just browsing. Housing a bitch might take you, break you, shake and make you. Have you with your crew, why that bitch is a late you? Talking about the nigga she got. That's you, nigga. So what the fuck you gon' do, nigga? You better play it all before you find yourself walking with a hard dick trying to play sore. They be claiming that they don't, but nine times out of ten, if they think they won't, they be claiming that they won't. But nine times out of ten, nigga, think they don't, and I know. They be claiming that they don't, but nine times out of ten, if they think they won't. But nine times out of ten, nigga, they, they don't blame me now, they don't, when I know they will I'm tryna teach all my niggas so they know the deal Never trust the bitch that says she on the pill She have your pan for shit, that ain't yours, nigga That's on the real, I still live Bitches ain't nothing but trite Make you wanna play OJ and pick up a knife, but that ain't right Nigga just fuck it and let her go Cause if I saw some green, I could fuck that hoe That's on my homeboy bin and my homeboy brand Cause if you got enough, nigga, you won't ever hit can Never in your life again And if you're rolling in a bitch, you can fuck up friends Cause every bitch I can think of that I fuck with be telling me from the dope that they don't suck dick But by the time a nigga hand hit the light switch They be down on their knees just to suck a nigga dick quick, bitch They be claiming that they don't But nine times out of ten nigga think they won't They be claiming that they won't But nine times out of ten nigga think they don't and I know They be claiming that they don't But nine times out of ten nigga think they won't They be claiming that they won't But nine times out of ten nigga think they don't and I know Bitch I know you and you know me and I know you get so horny Every time that you see me and my niggas around And if I say this on the train, bitch, I know you be down So stop front, yeah, and turn around and let me hit it from the back, yeah I wanna hit that ass smack, yeah I'm going strong to the hole like Shaq, yeah T-Dog trying to break that back, yeah Stack of chips got me up in your house And you trying to get it, got my dick in your mouth And your girlfriend licking on my nuts, sack While your man at home yelling, fuck that But tell him, he better charge it to the game Cause shit ain't the same when these hoes think you got a little change maintain And don't give a fuck where that hoe been Cause just remember Nigga, nine times out of ten. They be claiming that they don't, but nine times out of ten, nigga think they won't. They be claiming that they won't, but nine times out of ten, nigga think they don't, and I know. They be claiming that they don't, but nine times out of ten, nigga think they won't. They be claiming that they won't, but nine times out of ten, nigga think they don't, and I know. They be claiming that they don't, but nine times out of ten, nigga think they won't. They be claiming that they won't, but nine times out of ten, nigga think they don't, and I know. They be claiming that they don't, but nine times out of ten, nigga think. But nine times out of ten, they think they don't, and I know. Ooh, la la, they be claiming that they won't, but I know that they will see it. Ooh, la la, they be claiming that they won't, but I know that they will see it. Times out of ten, nigga think they don't, and I know. Ah, I love that song. That song is called "I Know." I was just messing around, and yep, it came out like that. Let me go to another phone call and see if we can get it in. Uh, 216, caller, you're on the air. Talk to me. Yo, what's up, bro? Nothing much. What's on your mind? 
Man, it's been a while, T. Uh, this is Brian from Cleveland. Um, man, where do I start? <laughs> What's on your mind? Well, first off, um, uh, man, this child support shit is out of control. Yup. Child. Because um, uh, too many times and too many stories about innocent dudes paying child support. And... Of course, it was like, it's, it's my fault. I didn't strap up enough, but <laughs> thing is, I leave these ratchet bitches alone. <laughs> Listen, yeah. um, Sorry. we we make most of our own problems. Most of the problems I have are my own. Um, and... Um, I could blame it on a few things, but if you know what you're doing and you still do it, then you can't blame somebody else when it doesn't. Like, I'll date hoes and then wonder why the hoe act like a hoe. I dated one girl when her mama straight up told me that her daughter was a hoe. I have no idea why I kept dating the girl anyway. But, it, it, like, people, some people like me believe that you deserve fucked up shit in life. So I think maybe a lot of what I do is uh, self-fulfilling prophecy. Like, if I deserve fucked up shit, fucked up shit keeps coming to me. If I feel like I don't deserve something worth something, then I keep getting shit that's fucked up. So it's nobody else's fault. But I can admit that living life this way is very difficult. It is. I I can admit it. It is not fun. And that's why I appreciate people like you and uh, others, because that way they put it out there and they say, hey, this ain't the way. Don't do this shit. And... I wouldn't wish my life on an enemy of mine. That that's the real truth. I wouldn't wish I'm dead ass. I wouldn't wish my life on an enemy of mine. Oh yeah. 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 That's what's up, man. But yeah, I've been watching a lot of your old stuff from um uh Y M uh Your World, My View T V two. A channel that you probably haven't been on in like three years. Because I can't get on it. When I try to log into it, it says that uh, the the Google product has been disabled. And I'm like, um. Oh, wow. Yeah, Yeah, so I can't get to it. That's why there's nothing there. I have have several channels like that that they blocked me out of, but they still exist. The classic channel. It's another channel. Mm. It's there. I can't get to it. Uh, uh, TNN Raw Frauds. It's there. I can't get to it. My Queen TV. Yep. <laughs> Can't get to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, I'm glad to know that you got a cash app. That's that's good. Because, uh, yeah, an easier way to donate now. Yeah, but ain't <laughs> nobody hitting that cash app. Well, it is a couple people who hit it. I ain't going to lie about that. Um, uh, somebody yeah. told me to do a Deadpool 2 review. Uh, Brandon Newsom said do a Deadpool uh, 2 review. I haven't watched it. Oh man, that's a great movie. It was because I've been oh, hearing I've been God. hearing people saying it, it was wasn't a, good. No, it was a great movie. <laughs> okay, now you're making me go. I'm going to go see it. Oh hell yeah, 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 bro! You you have to check out Deadpool two. I mean, it was it was done so well that it, it was awesome. I mean, Cable was on point. Okay, all right, now you got me want to see it. All right. Yep, I watched it like three times at theater and a couple times on Fire Stick, so. (laughs) How do you get it on? Because like my man Cap said, it sucked. But Cap said that Infinity War sucked too, and I love Infinity War, so I know he and I have a difference of opinion. Oh, yeah, I I watched your Infinity War uh, and review. I was like, Holy shit, he, he thought exactly what I thought about Thanos in that movie. Thanos was a badass. He was awesome. Yeah, I, I thought that was... When you can show me a movie that's th- over three hours long and I watch it and then watch it again and then watch it again, I've seen it yeah, three times and it I'm, like I it can't wait hours. for it. Yeah, I, it. I've seen it three times and I can't wait for it to come out on DVD. 
<laughs> if they put if they put out Infinity War on audio cassette tape, I'd buy it. <laughs> yep. I yep. would listen to it while I'm driving long distances. <laughs> Yeah, and then a friend of mine, he was like, uh, I don't want to tell the movie, but uh, it was like, uh, it, it, it was. Don't it tell me nothing. He was like, what? No. I'm don't not, tell I'm me not nothing. Gonna tell you the movie. I'm not going to do it. Don't even tell me the stuff it. that was in the previews. <laughs> I don't want to know nothing now. I don't want. <laughs> I think I'm, I was nope. superhero nope. out, so that might be why. And I've been depressed like a bitch, so I didn't feel like really going to see the movie. But. Who knows? Maybe I need oh, some downtime, okay. so I will watch it and go and buy me some alcohol because our movie theaters out here, they all get you drunk. So I'm going to go in there and get drunk. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yeah, do the, baby, the 12 baby. in the afternoon movie and just be fucked up like a real alcoholic. Because you know you're an alcoholic when you wake up and the first thing you get ain't breakfast, but it'd be a drink. Yep, a, a shot, shot of Jack, uh, Honey Jack Box. Right. I mean, Honey Jack, uh, Jack Daniels. Right. <laughs> I remember my brother. My mm-hmm. brother used to get up drinking. He didn't even go to the refrigerator. He had a six pack under the bed. <laughs> you know, you're an alcoholic when you drink and warm, when you drink warm ass beer. That's the sign of an alcoholic. When that nigga drank the beer straight out the <laughs> store. Like you bring in this this six pack straight out of the store, he just turn it up. You might be an alcoholic. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you you definitely an alcoholic, man. <laughs> <laughs> it no might be <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, brother, thank you so much you. for being a listener. And let me tell you something. This whole um, like I tell people, this whole idea of mm-hmm. what what women are allowed to do to men. It's disturbing. What was what's more disturbing is that us men won't fight it back. We could stop this if uh, we made uh, a I, fuss. Mm-hmm. But we won't. Yeah, I got well, I I actually been well, I I have a YouTube channel I've been making videos on. Mm-hmm. Um it really is just opinionated and that's what I start off saying in every video. And like, it's just my opinion, but I give like various topics on what I'm doing that day. I just express them on YouTube and upload them. Yeah. Who cares who watch them? I just do it as a matter of expressing myself because I have this weird thing where I just don't want to be around people. I don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I just get to the point where I just don't want to be no around nobody. I want no phone calls, no texts. I I'm. I don't want to be around. I'm, I'm with you. I don't like being around people because I just don't want to de- either make them depressed or make. But I don't want to ruin their day by me being feeling bad, or I don't want them to make me feel worse. Mm-hmm. I, that's dead ass. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a little. It's like a little mold I got to every once in a while, but mm, it's not all the time. It's about. I do about twice out of a month. Yeah, because if you hang around the right people, yeah. especially if you if you have a, a bit of depression, you hang around the right people. They can pull you out of it. Like they can make you forget what you were depressed by. Also, you hang around the wrong people. They can make you feel worse than you did before they came. So it's like it, it's 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 mm-hmm. a scary thing. It's almost like taking edibles. Like edibles can make you feel real good or can knock you the <laughs> fuck out, and you have no idea what's gonna happen. <laughs> It's a toss up. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Real quick, there's a funny story about that. It, I was at this 420 party, <laughs> and they were doing the edible thing. They were, you know, it was just eating edibles, passing drinks or whatever. It high out, high out of our mind. Then they pull out the they pull out these pina coladas, but they got like weed in them. <laughs> <laughs> and so ooh, I'm drinking and I'm like, you damn this shit strong. <laughs> and I was done. After after that I was done. I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you, edible, uh, ed- edible, edibles, edibles are for people who are adventurous. Like 
You take an edible because you just want to see what the fuck happened. Like you don't you you walked into it knowing you don't you don't know what's gonna happen. Cause I had uh I had a a drink. Uh, my ex sent me a drink that had uh THC in it too, and mm-hmm. I drank it like it was a regular old motherfucking uh powade or something, forgetting what it was. Oh shit. I was stuck like Chuck. I'm telling you, I was up in the corner, just curled up, couldn't do nothing. I knew I was there. Yeah, it was that good. Yeah, I, I knew I was inside of my my physical frame, but I couldn't move my physical frame. Oh damn! I was literally damn. sitting up in front. I yeah. drank that. I was up there going, "Darkness has taken my sight, taken my leg, taken my legs, taken my arms." <laughs> I'm Batman. <laughs> I was like, God, dog, why am I this high? Oh, my breath is I wish for death. Oh, please, God, wake me. <laughs> God, no. hey, brother, thank you so much for the phone call, man. Hopefully I can make you laugh a little bit, man. <laughs> oh, oh, oh no problem right oh yeah mission accomplished <laughs> take care now you too oh man for those who didn't get the reference that's a metallica song called one um if you go look at the video you'll get you will understand why i said this you have to take a look at the video and the video is from an actual old school movie where this military guy gets his arm blown off his leg blown off his mouth blown off and he spends his whole time just on his table and he can feel and he, but he can't talk so it's a scary, it's, it's scary in essence. Um, my man Cap is in the building. What up, bro? What up, Tommy? Not much. All right. What do you want to argue with me? We can we can do Infinity War uh, because you said All you right. didn't like it, and I said I did. So let's go. Let me set the stage because what you said that I just said it plainly sucked, and that was it. It's not the whole story. <laughs> you said it was SJ, S, SJW. That go ahead, tell him. You tell him. You can tell him better than me. Yeah, and every Marvel movie, uh, as of late, actually, there's a lot of political bullshit. Yeah, but Black, anyway, Black Panther was straight bullshit. Point. I'll give you that. That that Black Panther made me sick. Yeah, there, there, there was believe did they tried not to be racist, but incorporated too much racism. <laughs> you know, into it. They, they, you know what I'm saying? It's one of those things that you're like, oops. We tried, but you know what they say, the road to hell was paved with what? Good, Good intentions. intentions. Well, you know how that anyway, works. Like, when you try not to make fun of the, the, you try not to make fun of the midget, it, you usually end up doing it because you're consciously trying not to? Well, what you're doing is the, you're, you're kind of putting a spotlight on them. Yes. Even though you're not intending to, but you're trying so hard to not offend. <laughs> That you make the person like team extra, like extra special, right? <laughs> which, in, which in and of itself offends the person. Well, let me say this to you before you get into that. Did you know that NBC has started to take down all of the old videos about Pat? You're you're about the same age as me. You know Pat, the um the person who you didn't know if it was a man or a woman. They've taken all of the videos down now, yep. so you mm-hmm. can't see it because mm-hmm. it's offend transgenders. Yep. What kind of fuck shit is Absolutely. that? It's the way it is. I mean, if you're looking at, you know, taking shows off, I mean, the last season of whatchamacallit, How's the Cars, was taken down because Kevin Spacey might have slapped the booty 30 years ago. <laughs> they took Think him out of that, that movie that was that came out, the one that I went to go see. They put my man Christopher Plummer in there and then came to find out that Christopher Plummer talked about in his book, Fucking Underage Girls. Oops. Yep. <laughs> It is what it is. The whole world is that way. I just watched a movie. I just watched a movie early today with one of the best actors of all time, my man uh, Edward Norton. I've never heard of this movie. It's called The 25th Hour, directed by Spike Lee. The 25th Hour, I I watched for over 10 years. That is the best movie. If nobody's watched it, The 25th Hour, must watch. That was my first time seeing it. I was like, what the fuck haven't I seen this movie before? You remember what they had, your boy, um, who played Truman Capote, my man, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman? Remember what they had him doing? Uh-huh. 
Yep, with the well, what was it? That was the actress from Rogue, X Men, for Rogue from X Men, right? Yes. Yep. The whole thing was Ed Norton kept telling him, "Go on and fuck the seventeen year old." But ain't none of them mm-hmm. niggas is fucking with me. Boycott none of these people. This has been <laughs> this been around since. A, what, uh, uh, what my man got a song. Um, the the one who used to say, uh, "I'm Rick, Rick James." She was only seventeen, seventeen, but she was sexy. <laughs> this is so. Well, I mean, ageism is important. Everything is important. I mean, let's not even look at Hollywood. Uh, what's this prince who married this half black chick? Yeah. I mean, now they're claiming that's racism because now what they're saying is she can't be in touch with her blackness because she has to conform to their whiteness. <laughs> we need Trisha Shire, man, because you can't win. We need Rocky. To- <laughs> Some serious shit. You, gotta be saying, you know what? I, I, I told myself, you know, another couple of years, I'm going to be a hermit. Right. Like, it's no re. It, you- I'm an offensive motherfucker. That's what I was about to say. You can't say anything. But most of these people aren't even saying anything offensive and they haven't apologized for it. How is a man having to apologize for the fact that a woman took him saying something simple, a compliment? If you don't compliment a woman, you're a dick. If you do compliment a woman, but she don't like you, you're, you're, um, what's that shit they say that, that a man's doing that I'm wanting it or whatever the fuck you can't win. Chivalry is dead, but it's trying to be alive, but it's dead again, then it's trying to be alive. Who knows? Yep. You don't know where to fall in at. It so- depends. Nowadays, you got to read the woman, you know, so carefully that you have to know her five years in order to know if you should open the door for her or not. I'm going to say this to you before I let you get on to that. There's a scene in the movie, Beverly Hills Cop 2. I saw that today, too. You know, when you're depressed, you just watch a few movies. I must have watched more than a few since I watched, like, all movies that led up to Infinity War. That's kind of fucked up. But I've watched them all. Uh, but anyway, there's a movie that I was watching early today as well. And it's called Beverly Hills Cop 2. There's a scene in Beverly Hills Cop 2, which I said they would never be able to get away with that scene today. At the end of the movie, when the woman says, goodbye, Mr. Foley, when she's getting ready to shoot him. And the white cop, Taggart, shoots her from the side right before she gets ready to shoot Eddie Murphy. She falls down. And he looks at the camera and smiles and says, women. He would never be able to do that today. <laughs> they would never be able to do that today. If one, he would have never been able to shoot her. Nope. Two, they would have never let her be the bad guy. And three, he would have never been able to say that line. That's what's fucked up. That's, the 80s was probably the best time in today. human history. If you think about it, the 80s were the best time in human history. You had faggots, but you could make fun of faggots, but the faggots could live. You had racists. But you had people who would date outside their race. You had everybody. And it was fine. You could speak in the 80s. There wasn't this put a cap on what you say. The 80s were the best time in human history. Remember, in the 80s, the gays were out just as much as they are now. So why were they having less problems then than they are now? Because they didn't. That's for- a good question because they put, they've been put on the hot seat. That's right. They didn't force it down your throat. Hot seat. They didn't make it to where they had to be something. They just were. You didn't, nobody Whether fucked like with Boy George and nobody had a problem listening to Boy George. Think about it. Nobody had a problem listening to Elton John. Nobody had a problem listening to George Michael. Why not? But think about this. I ask the audience, name one person in the audience to name any modern show on TV, whether it's a sitcom, action, drama, Name one show where at least one episode you don't have gay or transgender or some kind of political bullshit crammed on yourself. Yep. It's it, it, Somebody said dead or alive. Yep. You knew that, man. He's running around talking about some you spin me right round. You knew that was a bitch. <laughs> Freddie Mercury. He'd been sucking dick for so long his teeth was crooked. Like you wild for putting your dick in that blender. But wow. people did it. <laughs> <laughs> Sucking dick so long, your teeth were crooked. I'm saying that. One. <laughs> His mouth looked a mess. Who is letting him suck a dick? That's an adventurous you know they're person. They're making a movie about him, right? <laughs> I hope ain't no dick sucking in it. They're, made, they're making a movie about. They're making a movie about Freddie Mercury with with that actor, the main actor from uh, Mr. Robot. Really? He's Freddie Mercury. Yep, he's Freddie Mercury. You know who I always thought would have been the perfect Freddie Mercury? 
Oh. Sasha Baron Cohen. Ah, I love Sasha. He look. He tell me, funny. he doesn't yeah, look he like. Yeah, would have made a good guess. There's the other one. Um, what's the? There's another guy. I forget his name. Is Dominic something? Mm-hmm. He played in the Devil's Double. He played in the World of Warcraft movie as the king. I forget his name, but he would have made a nice one too. Hmm. Somebody said Sasha was supposed to do it. Well, they're afraid to hire Sasha as of late. There's been a whole series uh, of shows saying why Hollywood won't hire Sasha Baron Cohen anymore. She's an extremely <laughs> offensive guy. And I and I like his kind of comedy because he makes fun of everybody. Hold on a sec. Let me read this for these people, and then I want you to go into it. Uh, Ronald Spates Jr. says, keep working, bro, and please stay on YouTube. I'm trying. Y'all keep donating. I'll keep fighting them flags. If, if not, then I'm going to have to stay away from it. Paul Williams. Duel Rivas says, you ain't shit, Chucky. Is that you, Chucky? Love from 405. Are you coming to OKC during your tour? Yeah, I would love to come to OKC because I like OKC, and I got to make sure I come there when y'all well, tornado season gone. D. Marshall sending a donation. Says, respect for you, Tommy, and for responding to my message in the chat. Eyes wide open 360. Thank you very much. All right, go for it. Tell us why you did not like Infinity War. Okay. I come from a strong comic book background. Mm-hmm. You come to my house, I have all the collector comics. I have some very expensive rarities. I have all the slip cases, the omnibuses from Marvel. Big comic guy. And I believe Infinity War is one of the best stories ever told in the Marvel Universe. Mm-hmm. Now, coming from there and going to see the movie, if I never read the comics, like my wife never read the comics, she loved it. My kids, they loved it. You know what? I could see why they would love it. Because, I mean, it was a great movie for what it was. But for what it was supposed to be, and my expectations from reading the comics, there was no Adam Warlock, no Galactus, no Lord in Chaos, no Gardener, no Champion. It just seemed like, compared to the comics... Well, you know they couldn't, like, know. Like, if they put Adam Warlock in there, it wouldn't make sense because he wasn't even introduced to it yet. It's the same reason why they couldn't put uh, Captain the, Marvel in there. She wasn't introduced. That's yeah. the, that, Go ahead. That's the whole mystique, though. That, that's the whole mystique. The mystique came from Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. When, when Doctor Strange got introduced, he bought that level of mysticism, that level of other dimension, that no Marvel character in the Marvel Studios universe, the movie universe, ever bought. Because mm-hmm. if you look at it, everybody except, like, let's say, Thor and Loki are, you know, humans who either drank some poison, got radiation poisoning, have a lot of money to build tech. You know, it, it, nothing was really special. So when they had the fight, to me, it kind of seemed like Civil War. The only part I found amazing about that movie was Thor. And even then, when Thor came in there, I expected to hear the song. I was so pissed. I told I told him I was like I was like, really, you're just not gonna play it. You know, but but again, reading the comic and going in, I wanted to see more of what I wasn't expecting because everything they had in that movie was expected. Besides the death, we everybody had a death pool of who was gonna die and who was gonna live. And they, everybody had these conversations and their own theories. So that was the only level of mysticism in that show. You know, the ending with Miss Marvel, you know, okay, great. You know, like, you know, another political, you know, we need a woman to save our lives. You know, okay, great. Let's, that's fine. I wanted to see more. I wanted to see Space Fan Titan. I wanted to see a more backstory of Thanos. Well, at least they didn't put Squirrel Girl in it. Right, I would have left. I would have left the theater, and I would have started a riot. <laughs> I did. Well, right. but so what you're saying is, based upon the comics, they didn't do what you expected in the comic. But you also know that they haven't been, because if you were disappointed in this, then you were surely disappointed in Civil War as well, right? Yes, but here's the thing: I understand. Don't get me wrong, Tommy. There's no way in the world was I expecting 
for them to port the comic into the movie because I would have been really disappointed if they made Thanos to seem like a galactic sin for Mrs. Death. Mm-hmm. That's what I was about to you say. Know, I, you didn't want that story told. I didn't. Right, but no, of course not because it wouldn't have made, like, the way they displayed it in the movie, it wouldn't have made sense. But they should have added something like, holy shit. Like, when you watch the movie, you know, you're sitting there eating your popcorn, expecting what you're already expecting, and a twist. Plot who, who is this guy? Is that Dr. Doom? What I, just happened? Like, I That's wish they I could expected. put them I, in it, but they can't. Like, they can't. Like, the doc, Dr. Doom is was way misused it with, by Fox. I think he would be... Well, shit, I don't know, because... Ronan the Accuser was misused by Marvel. Marvel does a bad job with their bad guys. I guess most most of these companies do not do well with their bad guys. Does that make sense? Say that one more time. Like most of these sh- movies, they don't do well with the bad guy. They don't flesh out the bad guy very well. Right. Well, I agree with you there. This is one of the best Marvel bad guys ever made and portrayed in a movie. Mm-hmm. And I love the fact that for one, the good guys lost. Yes, and and they lost dearly. Hell, they lost easily. You know, but what I, I wouldn't say easily because in the comic book they didn't even have to have a chance. So at least here, you know, Hollywood made made them have a fighting chance. You know, because if you look at the movie, if you remember the movie, because I remember you said you saw it more than once, what's that guy's name from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy? He was the one who fucked it all up. Yeah, yeah, they were about to get his glove off, yeah. Spider-Man almost literally had his glove off, and then this this, this other galactic sim. (laughs) He's like, oh, you killed my girlfriend. He called it a galactic sim. (laughs) He's yeah, an he all-world simp. You know, <laughs> simp you know Thanos, Thanos was, a, was a galactic simp, so they took his mid death away because they didn't want that. So they introduced another galactic simp who was like, wait, you killed my girlfriend? Everybody must die. <laughs> it was stupid. Like, yes, I don't like when they do that. That part, If you want to tell me a part that was... If you want to tell me a part that <laughs> bothered me, that bothered me. That that really did, it like, dude, like la- seriously? It, it seemed like lazy. It seemed like lazy writing. Yes. Don't even write that in because there was no need for it. Don't show me that they almost got the glove off. And the reason they didn't get the glove off was because this dude who was about to shoot the girl to prevent her from dying now wants to f- punch the dude in the face after he found out she dead. Thank you. Thank you. Makes no sense. That's that's when I said the movie sucked. Mm-hmm. Not I will because say that. it sucked because of all the you know the, the, there was a lot of good points in that movie. The Thor, you know, getting beamed by the sun, but getting bitch slapped by Thanos. Yeah, Hulk getting them hand. Hulk getting them hand. You know, was perfect. He needed that because he was a little bit too cocky. Because both folks, both Bruce Banner and Hulk, were cocky as hell. Yeah. I like well, how he, I like how he was, whooped you know, the Hulk's ass in the submissions. Like he let the Hulk get all them punches in, and then he figured out how the Hulk was fighting and whooped his ass. Because the difference between the Hulk and him yeah. is the Hulk uh, Thanos actually can fight. Like he's a fighter. Hulk just smash. No, no. When 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 uh, Loki said we have a Hulk, and Hulk did his thing, and then that skinny dude was like, "Yo," and the Dark Order was like, "Let Thanos have his fun." Yeah, <laughs> and then Thanos, then Thanos got up and, and did some the Rock DDT, Jake the Snake Roberts moves on him, body slammed him from left to right, like completely obliterated the Hulk. You remember that when he? Remember when he hit him with that, with that, with that throat punch, like you hit a bitch with? Yep. <laughs> you hit a bitch ass nigga with that <laughs> in the neck. <laughs> You know, the, 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 then he bitched out the whole throughout the whole show. No, I'm not coming. Like, okay, that's fine. Whatever. He's having performance anxiety. Okay, great. <laughs> you know, but again, the part where they almost took his glove off and then it got ruined because this dude 
was pissed off at uh, him killing Gamora or putting her in the Soul Stone or whatever it was, you know, that ruined the whole movie for me. And that's what it takes usually nowadays to ruin a movie for me. Your whole movie can be great, but if you have that one weak point, which destroys all logic and all common sense, what you just said, he was willing to shoot Gamora so Thanos wouldn't have her. All of a sudden now, when they almost have the glove off and save the universe, you're like, nope, not going to happen. Because the, the thing is, is once they got the glove off him, then he could have did whatever he wanted to to him. He could have bought her back. He, the, the time stone was in, uh, whatchamacallit, Dr. Strange's grass. Yep. None of that that part made sense, and it was it was ugly to me. So I agree with you on that. Um, the fighting in Wakanda was it was kind of stupid. I'm still tired of them regular old humans being able to get into the fight. I'm mad because if every country on the planet knew that this invasion was taking place, because they would have had to, because it all started with Bruce Banner being thrown down um, through the the bridge by Hemdall, and that should have been Silver Surfer. Y- yes. But what was fucked up was the rest of the planet, the militaries and all that, where was Ross? None of these people, none of these countries even decided to fight? Seriously? Well, where, where was Nick Fury? Yeah. He would have known all that stuff happened. That was a world event that happened that started it off when Ebony Maul them came and the big old spaceship was there. There was nobody on the planet that would not have known that information at all. So none of these people joined the fight? That's, that's kind of stupid. But I guess, you know, it's a movie. I mean, the ship, the ship landed on, like, Times Square. <laughs> it wasn't in Memphis. You know, it wasn't in Montana, North Dakota. Right. It was right in the middle of Times Square. And nobody said shit. You know, when they were fighting, when uh, Bruce came crashing through, mm-hmm. when Hamdahl sent them, then you had Loki there, then you had Doctor Strange, and you had Monk. Then, yeah, you know, Iron Man and uh, they're fighting in the middle of, like, Soho. And yep. nobody came. Nobody came. And I said, come on, dog. And here's, the, uh, and here's the other thing. That whole love story between Vision and Scarlet Witch and they're getting fucked up by the Dark Order and all of a sudden they get your ass to save by Black Widow. That pissed me I Thank you. I, I'm tired of Black Widow being able to fight along with these people. I'm sick of that shit. I don't care how good of a fighter she is. They would be able to put their hands on this woman. Another thing, the, the bitch who play um, Scarlet Witch, I want y'all to all go back and listen to her in that movie again. That bitch lost her whole Russian accent. It was gone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And nobody who was on set said, is, is the bitch, like, I think it's stupid to have her with that Russian accent. The other one don't have it. Black Widow don't. Don't give it to her. The accent is she is it's a bad accent anyway. Just let her talk like a regular old bitch. But they've been having her talk with that fuck ass Russian accent. And then in this movie, she didn't have it at all. I thought she was doing some incognito shit. <laughs> like are you trying to like I was trying to figure it out. Like are you trying to throw people off? Because I'm thrown off too. <laughs> I say come <laughs> on. <laughs> Yeah, like it was. So that's what I. That's why I don't. I didn't quite like Avengers. There were too many holes, and there was some lazy writing. They they used the strength of the Marvel universe, and you know the Infinity Stone story. They could have did a. They they could have fine tweaked it better. And here's why I'm hoping when Doctor Strange went to its 14 million different, you know, Rubik's cube of different possibilities. And said we only win one, that was cool. And I'm hoping that the next one is going to vindicate the first one. Yeah. I think they w- they're they going to be able to put more into the next one. So I think the first one was this had already been planned. Because you have to remember, if they could have waited for probably about two, three more years, they would have with them buying the Fox properties. Because look at how they had to throw in Spider-Man. They had to just throw him in, and they did a good job of it, but he was thrown in. Well, he was thrown into a lot of things. I mean, Spider-Man, through, like, what? Through the last 10 years, went through several actors. I've never once said, oh, my God, I have to see the Spider-Man movie. 
All of them have been Amazon Prime views from me. <laughs> The last two were bad. You know, the first, I mean, the last two before this one were bad. The first two before the third one was good. Like I wish they could find a way to bring uh, Toby Maguire back about, into the movie. Talking about Homecoming. Now, yeah, the Homecoming was okay, but I'm talking about the two with um that dude who was dating, who was in real life, Andrew. I can't remember his last name, Andrew something, but I didn't like him. I didn't like his Spider-Man at all. But the first two Spider-Man, yeah, they were actually pretty good. Whoa, 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 whoa. With Toby. that McGuire kid. Yeah, Toby, Toby, first two were really good. The The third one wasn't that good, but it wasn't as bad as people say it was either. I'm biased. I'm biased to the beginning ones. Can I tell you why? It was still new. If I, I haven't watched them recently, I bet I might you know, pick it apart a little bit better. But when it first came out, those were one of the first MCU movies along with Iron Man. You know, because I love Yes, Iron but Man, the, uh, Spider-Man wasn't Iron a part of the MCU. Was, Spider-Man was never part of the MCU. They yeah, just was, were able to buy yeah, it. Yeah, it was still, it was still Sony, it was Sony Pictures due to licensing. You know, I get that. But, you know, when you read the comics, you know, it kind of convolutes the whole thing. And that's a lot of the problem they're having, though. Like when they do Civil War, well, they didn't have any of the, the properties from Fox that they needed. To make it correctly. Right. They needed, they needed Wolverine. Wolverine and the Hulk were very pinnacle with Adam Warlock to yep. the destruction of Thanos. And, so, and that's the problem you know, they're but, having. And they talk a lot about other people that they want to put in, but they can't. And there's some of the Marvel well, characters talking, that are owned by small Marvel. companies that are holding them hostage now. Like, they have properties well, that the small companies should just go ahead and sell it to them. But since the companies, the small companies know they want these characters... They're tr- trying to get him an arm and a, ye- a leg. And, and and the Marvel people are like, we don't need this character that bad where we're going to overpay you for him, so fuck you. Well, according to the market, you know, because they do a lot of market trading, uh, Sony, Fox, and a lot of the other smaller independents who own some of these, you know, MCU rights, you know, because back in the 90s, you know, Stanley kind of sold off a whole bunch of them. MCU wasn't doing too well. Then, you know, the Hulk, the first Hulks, and a lot of the first movies didn't care well at all. They were horrible. So Stanley sold a bunch of them, you know. Mm-hmm. So he was left with some good, he was left with a good portion of them, but he sold a lot of them. And in the beginning, there were, you know, a lot of the studios were like, no, nah, we want to keep it more cartoon. We want to keep it more, they don't work. So now that they're seeing it, a lot of these companies, now that Disney bought a lot of it off, they're coming together and saying, you know, we, we want to do crossovers. We see the money. You've proved it through a 10-year storyline. you proved it through, you know, box office sales, merchandise sales, you know, DVD sales, longevity comics. They're, they're trying to incorporate it in. Now the fight between them is who gets how much of the portion. Because, if, if you know, they say we want Wolverine. Well, Fox says, look, we don't want to make 1% of the gross when we're giving you a big-ass character. We want more of the money. So right now they're in the negotiating table trying to see what percentage each, you know, license holder is going to get. But we are promised to see crossovers in the future of the upcoming MCU film. Well, the thing is, they were able to do it with Spider-Man because Sony got tired of hemorrhaging money. So I love the deal they worked out. Spider, Basically, with Spider-Man, what they said was, we will allow our biggest character from Marvel to join him in his movie, his solo movie. What we want to do, though, is we want to have our people write it so we can write it into the regular script, uh, what we have going on. So we will produce the movie. You distribute the movie. So Sony gets all of the distribution money. And it's smart. So if you're Sony, you're like, I don't have to write it. They write it. They're writing into their stuff. Then when they make a solo movie, because we loan them our biggest property, they will loan us back their biggest property, which was our DJ. What they did, exactly what you said, what they did is instead of giving somebody a check, they, you know, which is you know, a one-time thing, they made a symbiotic relationship. Yep. And that's the way they're doing it. That's why they, made, that's why they were bold enough to make a promise to the market and to investors that crossovers will happen. Yeah, and, and hopefully and now a lot of the, the smaller companies they work with 
those smaller companies don't they're not like Sony where they can distribute shit because Sony has its own distribution. So they were like, well, we don't have to make the movie. We'll just distribute it. We can make just as much money doing right. distribution. Um, well, the other companies the won't do that because they're uh, small. They're just dicks. They're trying to hold on to those properties to get a huge payday for them. And Marvel at this point is like, we're so hot, we don't need Tommy. them. Huh? Me and you would do the same thing, Tommy. If mm-hmm. we had right, we'd be like, nope. Yeah, if I had a character that you uh-huh. really wanted, I'd probably hold on to it too if I know that's all I have. And that's One of what the biggest a- blunders going on right now is uh, Fantastic Four because, you know, what's funny about the Fantastic Four? What's that? Fantastic Four and Doctor Doom, you know, which is kind of like, you know, Thanos and the MCU, they're both owned by separate companies. I did not know so that. Fantastic I know Fox... Fantastic Four can't have... I know Fox have been using them. When did they lose Doctor Doom? They never had them. They rented it, and they rented it in a limited fashion. Oh, yeah, kind of like what uh, the MCU is doing with... um the Hulk like they don't have the Hulk they can put the Hulk in a movie but they can't do a solo Hulk movie right but because the Hulk is also mostly CGI Mm -hmm. it was a lot easier you know as where you know Doctor Doom would have to be a whole production and it takes much more resources and time and acting and costumes and all this other scheduling nonsense for them to include Doctor Doom and Doctor Doom is a huge figure to me, Doctor Doom is almost almost as huge as Thanos. Well, he is, and but see, the, the problem with the Doctor Doom character, like I said, from what they have is Fox didn't have really good writers. They just don't. You look at what they did with it. Now, I will give them credit. The X Men New Class, the the first class, the first one, and the second one were really good. Mm-hmm. So I give them credit for that. And then they did Apocalypse, and then they they just fucked that up. For Apocalypse, supposed I mean, to be. I'm biased. Uh huh. I'm biased to anything Magneto. You know, every time I watch him kill a Nazi, I'm like, you know, standing ovation. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big Magneto fan. Magneto is one of my all-time favorites. He's mine too. I like Magneto. You know, now let's move away from that. Let me ask you this. What do you think about Venom? The new one, I have no intention of seeing. Tom Hardy is a great actor. Again, another company that should not have done the movie themselves. They should not have done it. They should have just said, let's let the MCU have it. But they know that they have a property that's that they can make money off of, so they'll just throw a movie together. It didn't look good at all. The CGI looked horrible. I'm sorry. I, I, I have no interest. They, they, these companies need to return or rent or yes. come up with some kind of symbiotic relationship. To let MCU, who apparently knows exactly what you're doing, yep. they know the story. Because to, because to Sony, I mean, Sony does so many things. To them, Spider-Man is just another movie. Well, it's you know, the same Spider-Man with the guys who did... Character. Well, it's the same what they did with Michael Bay, letting him fuck up the Transformers over and over and yep. over again. He doesn't know the source material. He doesn't have respect for it. That's the one thing I can give the MCU. They have respect enough for the source material. When they do something as simple as put um, Beta Ray Bill statue in Thor, that means you paid attention to the source material. You may have not been able to put it in there, but you did just like the Stormbreaker. They are able to put the things that people remember from the comics in there. What they're doing with the Transformers and what they allowed this man to do for, what, five, six parts was completely fuck up something that was already written. Oh, and he has more to fuck up. He has like three or four more in contract to fuck up. Oh, God, no. Uh-huh. There's a new uh, Transformers coming out next year. They're already filming it here in Tucson. <laughs> oh, God. Yes, sir. Like, I don't understand. Like, and, then, uh, and after that one, there's three more. Um, I I haven't watched a, I watched Transformers one and two. I never watched another one. You, I'm not gonna let you ruin my childhood. I like the last one. I can't lie, but 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 anything before that, it was it was an all right movie to watch on Netflix. 
I'm serious. It was, you know, it, was, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was, you know, the CGI was cool. You know, the Hasbro toys, you know, remember the kid getting nostalgic. It's the only reason somebody like me would watch them. But the last one, though, I was impressed. Not at the beginning, but the middle and the end, they followed the path. But again, if you look at Michael Bay, if you look at Sony, if you look at Fox, all these characters are just another movie under their belt. Yes. When you go to the MCU, you have these, you know, bearded, balding, fat Dungeons and Dragons nerds who've done nothing. They even gave up ass and pussy just for this. And they've dedicated their whole life to not just understanding how the character looks and moves and feels, but understanding the backstory and the passion behind it. Yep. If you look at so all of the MCU movies, what I love about it, it references, it always says Kevin Feige at the end, Feige. It always has, um, like if you look at the produ- the producers, it's the same ones on every one of the movies, which means they keep a tight grip on the scripts, but they allow each director, because it'll be a different director for each movie, but they allow them to go what way they want to. Like one thing that really bothers me is uh, the new Avengers basically wiped out everything that happened in the Thor movie that came just two months prior. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, it. If you look at it, everything that had that had done in there wiped it out. The fact that it made Ragnarok, it yeah, it, it made Ragnarok. Was why was Ragnarok important when Thanos, right after that, uh, snapped his fingers and got rid of half? Well, he went on the ship and killed half of the people. You don't see where the other half went. Um, why would out of all the people that Hemdall decided to save, he'd save the Hulk, who he did not know? When he could have saved uh, Thor, who he did know, he could have saved Loki. Why would he pick the Hulk? That, that's what confused me. The same as you know, um, Black Widow confused me is how, how is she taking these hits and you know Vision and you know Scarlet Witch cannot. You know apparently Scarlet Witch back in the Age of Ultron and you know other movies she was like a like a power to be reckoned with. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden here, she's like, you know, like a schoolgirl, you know, and then Scarlet Witch saved the day. I mean, there was just so many. So, and before I get hate emails and all that's why it's not. The movie itself, if you've never read the comics and, you know, you enjoy, you know, some fast-paced action, awesome. If you're looking for, you know, a richer story with, you know, the original meaning, not there. Yeah, it, and, and and another thing that bothered me is I love when Thor's dad said, are you the god of hammers? To Blake, let him know you don't need that hammer. Two months later, he, went he needs... To, yeah, he went and got another one. That don't make sense. <laughs> that was, was dumb. Easter eggs, you know. There was a lot of Easter eggs, you know, that were there also. You know, that a lot of people missed that led up to this. The dreams that uh, Black Widow had from her past when mm-hmm. she saw the kids with no mouths because she was sterile. Mm-hmm. She, she was never going to get those kids. So, you know, they can't talk. Then there was the part where Himdall couldn't see when he spoke to Thor and he was blind. And yeah. Asgard can't see. Then there was another one where I forget which one it was, couldn't hear. So he can't see, can't speak, can't hear. Yeah, but they, they but you gotta understand they messed that up too. If I'm not mistaken, it didn't her and Magneto make Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. Yes, but I'm talking about the movie itself. If you watch the movie, they, they were trying to tell them Thanos was coming. To, uh, without even seeing Thanos. They're trying to let them know that because you were an unwilling to kill some innocent people. Thanos happened. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Yeah. It was in the movie. Now, here's the other thing I wanted to talk about at the ending of the movie. Be quick, because we've talked for Thanos, over an hour, but it's been fun. I love this conversation, but I want to see if I can get some more of the people who are on the line on. So do you guys who are on the line, I'm going to get to you guys. Right, but go ahead. I'm enjoying real, this conversation. Real quick, real quick, real quick, last thing. At the end of the movie, I have a sneaking suspicion 
that Thanos was one of the people who also died. You I, and Who's here's mine. Uh, we gotta have a Marvel. Y'all want to just do a Marvel show one day, or a comic book? Uh, we may do it. Call it just comics, or maybe Marvel or something like that. But here's what I think, and you tell me if you tell me, tell me what you think. I I actually think the end of Avengers, the last Avengers, was actually the end of the next Avengers. Booyah. Explain. See, remember, he, in the comic book, he quits and he willingly quits after he loses. He quits and realizes the, the error of his ways and becomes a farmer. Mm-hmm. At the end, he's looking out. I think what that is is what happens after they defeat him. I think that's the end. What you saw was the end of the next part. I don't think it was the end of this one. I think it was the end of the next one. Which makes sense to what you just said to the next part in the comic book. Yep. Even Vision said the only reason... Thanos will ever be defeated and was defeated in the past was because he allowed himself to be defeated. Yep. Because in the comic book, he well, what happened was he he spent his whole life not feeling like he was worthy, so he's been trying to be worthy. I think what happens is they're going to explain it to him why he wasn't worthy, and he gives like the comic book, and he just says the biggest threat to Thanos is Thanos. Right. He's his own worst enemy. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like, I really like Thanos' character. I do. And again, people might shoot me down for this. Just like Bane and Thanos and the Dark Knight, I do not believe they were bad people. I believe, like, like Thanos said, I too am cursed with knowledge. Yep. When we told that to uh, Tony, Tony Stark. Stark. Mm-hmm. I, I believe that uh, some people are required to make decisions, and sometimes those decisions are so dark that you seem to be the bad guy because it's some of the hardest decisions to make, but they're a necessary evil. So I'm a big fan of Thanos. I don't believe Thanos is a bad guy. He could have been misguided. Because even when that little, uh, you know, centipede insect Asian girl put her hands on Thanos' head, she did not believe in evil. She said there's pain and misery and suffering. Mm-hmm. And but I do not believe him to be bad. Well, I like the fact that they gave me a character that wasn't just evil for no reason. Because I hate people that are evil for no reason. I like exactly. the fact that he honestly was thinking... Because I, when I tell people, and I know you're on the other end of the spectrum, but I was talking to a young lady the other day, and I was telling her, yeah, you should read Mein Kampf. She's like, I don't feel right reading it. I said, why wouldn't you want to read the words of the man himself? Regardless of what he's saying, why wouldn't I've you want to? I've been trying to get that book forever. And they, and they make it to where you can't get it. Why not? I've been trying to get that. As an Israeli Jew whose grandmother was in the Holocaust, I know a whole lot about it, but I've been trying to get my hands on that book for must have been a greater of 15 years. Can't do it. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy. You should be able to read the writings of, an, of, a, of a maniac. Why wouldn't you want to know what it, this it, fucker it's, wrote? It's, real, it's reality, though, Tommy. So forget that he was a maniac. It's what happened. Yep. Why are you trying to shield me from what happened, whether it's good or bad? Thank you. You know, but with that, yeah, I know you have a lot of people that want to get on the line. If you ever do a show about comics, stuff like that, I would love to be a part of it. Let me know. You know I'm going to bring you on, bro. Yes, sir. And uh, I'll continue to watch. For all, have a good night. Thank you very much. That's Thanks, my man, Tommy. Cap. Um, this is, a, a, I, I'm sorry for those who, look, a good phone call like that, I enjoy it. Oh, don't worry about a call if you blocked um, Roy. Uh, Roy just sits around name calling. That's, that's all he knows how to do. Uh, they don't know how to actually have a conversation. Let's see. The rest of you guys, I'm going to let you go in really quick. Uh, 478, caller, you're on the show. What's going on? Oh, I'm, I'm doing great. I'm doing wonderful. Just um, 
you know, just watching some uh, late night TV. Start off the start on my week, right? <laughs> no, no problem. Talk to me. What's on your mind? Oh yeah, I was I was just watching uh, the the highlights of you know of well of the wedding, but I guess you know it. it, it I think there were some parts of it should have been like a teachable moment. You know, you had like you know. Uh, you know, once I had all the friends and family and, you know, you just had one of them had just one person, you know, on the other side. I mean, that should have been a, that should have been a teachable moment. Like, you know, you want to have one person, you know, you got one, one, uh, one individual, you know, on one side of church. And then, you know, one of them got all the friends, I mean, all, well, just mostly family. You know, and two, three, four generations of you know kinfolk. I mean, that should have been a hint right there. Like you know, when you when, when you uh, go for having being independent, or you know, instead of you know having a family, at the end of the day, you just end up alone. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I just thought you know it, it, that's what that's what I got from. I mean, I don't know if anyone actually, you know, you know got got that you know. Got the got got the you know got the that that lesson you know what I mean I mean if you go for you know independence in which basically independent I mean you know you're alone <laughs> guess what at the end of the day you won't be, that's that's pretty much it alone you don't you don't have anything to share with you know yeah, that's true and but, I I can say that that's one of my fears that I um that I'm alone. I don't like being a, a, alone like this because like, what, what do you, what do you share? Like if I have all this knowledge and people want to hear from it, I don't want to just give it out to people. I don't know. It would be nice to give it out to somebody that I, that I know. And I, and I, and, and, uh-huh. and I don't have that ability. Um, and I think what happens is I was born too, too late. If I was probably born about 20 years earlier, 20 to 30 years earlier, I would have had an opportunity. At this moment now, I just think it's it's a waste of time. I, I guess from a, I guess from a certain point of view, yeah. The thing is, I, I mean, I I agree. Uh, or probably, well, only go. I mean, I agree with you to a to a point. The thing is, this you know. I mean, having the knowledge is good, but you you know you just have to give it to some you know someone that you know will appreciate, will accept it, you know, will will value it, you know, you know, like like saying because if you just give it away, it's like you know with the that biblical phrase, you know, throwing you know throwing uh, throwing your pearls amongst the swine, throwing swine, yes, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, it, it, it was just. You know, it was just something to think about it. And what? A, and it, I did realize watching the uh, watching the, the highlights from all the other people. I mean, I mean, one one group of people from from certain channels, you know, saying, "Oh, uh, you know, the biracial, you know, the biracial the daughter-in-law." You know, and then I think one of one of the group it was. I think all black women. I think it was, I think it was the British. It was in. I think one of them was British. They didn't say biracial. They said black. <laughs> <laughs> that was, it was like they didn't even they they didn't try to say correction. Was she black? No, not biracial. She black. It's, it's, black women just look like, stupid, and I don't understand why they don't they they don't see how. Well, I, why would I ask why that group of people doesn't understand why they look so stupid when that group of people go out every day. And do stupid shit. I'm gonna do a news report tomorrow, or maybe even later later tonight. Of a well, I, I, I can't yeah. do it until I get my website back up. But there's a black woman who's an actual mm-hmm. surgeon who is having charges mm-hmm. brought against her because this dumb bitch was recording people who she was having surgery on while listening to rap music and dancing. I shit you not. She was uploading mm-hmm. the videos to YouTube. Oh my goodness! That's how dumb this bitch was. 
real. Oh my, that's that's ridiculous though. It's ridiculous, Tommy. I don't, I don't, I don't know about it. And I was just and and I'm wondering. And the thing that get me is this: if after seeing this now, after seeing this wedding and eleven seasons of the Jeffersons and seven seasons of Scandal, you would think now after this you can't see. And now look, you can't get. I just see all this. You can't get mad when a brother starts swearing. You can't get mad at Donald, Donald Glover no more, or uh, you know, or, or or Tyrese, you know, dating somebody, you know. Cause but why would they get mad at Tyrese then, for dating a woman who's blacker than the woman who married Prince Harry? <laughs> And not only she married Prince uh-huh. Harry, but if I'm not mistaken, Prince Harry was the one walking around in the in the swastika outfits. That was him. Yeah. Go, go look it up. That was him. Yeah, black women are real forgiving mm-hmm. of him long as he'll put his dick in a in a half black bitch. So I want you just to think about that. That should let you know the mentality of the black yeah. woman during slavery. Yes, she might have hated the white man until the white man came down and fucked her. Then she liked him. Because for you to say a dude who you see in a mm-hmm. Nazi uniform, somebody said, and he was in blackface. Mm-hmm. So he's done both these damn things. But as long as he'll put his dick mm-hmm. in a black woman, he all gravy. Dang. <laughs> Golly, boy, that's, yeah, that's. Black women are real yeah, forgiving. That's crazy, yeah. Black women are real forgiving. <laughs> and we're supposed to think that that group yeah. of people are on our team. You think how, how do you think they feel if a black dude dated a white bitch who went around and did that before he got with her? Oh, they're losing their mind. <laughs> At a drop of a hat, man. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was... It, 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 <laughs> All Kanye dude, West said was slavery was a choice. He a bad dude. This motherfucker was in Nazi garb and had his people dress up in blackface. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, that, I mean, I can't. I mean, it's not like it was a, a rumor. I mean, they got pictures of it. I mean, it's documented. Yep. You know, it's. And then you got black bitches. Yeah, I want to think. They, I, I want to thank you for the call. I'm going to see if I can sneak the rest of these people in before I have to go. Uh, I want to thank you guys, all of you guys who are on the line. I'm going to get to you guys as quick as I can. But I want you guys to also think of something else, if you could. They keep saying she's a princess or a queen. She's not a princess, nor a queen, nor will she ever be a princess or a queen. There is an older brother in this deal. The most she could be is what she is, a duchess. How many of you guys knew that? The most she can be is what she is, a duchess. But black women keep calling this bitch a queen. So they don't even know how the monarchy works. Ah, I'm gonna talk about that tomorrow. Let me. I'm I'm not gonna keep shooting my. I'm not gonna blow my wad like this. Seven six three, caller, you're on the line. Hey, um, Tommy, it's me, Sean Wilson. What's going on, man? Talk to me. What's going on? Hey, listen, uh, I tried to get to you on your website, but uh, I couldn't get through. But um. Here's the deal, man. Um, I just got off the paperwork today. I'm kind of happy, so it's some good news. So I want to give you some good news. All right. If you read the comic books, you would know that uh, the Black Widow, she was designed to kill Spider-Man in the original origin and everything else. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's actually enhanced just like the, um, uh, what is it, um, Silver Surfer, um, Super Soldier, whatever his name, Bucky is. And... Um, no, I believe I, I, I know that, but they won't do it for the movie. Why not? They just make her a regular bitch. Well, it's two reasons. You remember what happened to Ghostbusters, right? Uh huh. Why well, make that SJW stuff that ain't selling in the comic books, and they doing all that when they could just you know keep making money and still got people in there? You know what I'm saying? 
So, you know, it, it helps everybody, but it's that white liberal gift, man. You know well, saying? if you're going to make a woman kind of whooping deal. a man's ass, at least make me understand why this woman's whooping a man's ass. That's all. So if well, you tell me civil, she's enhanced, civil, I get it. If you watch Civil War and you read the comic book Civil War or whatever, you would know that um, Bucky and them both trained together and they even had a love affair. That's before Bucky gets to be Captain America and they kill him in Civil War. So they did a lot of different plot twists to do a lot of things to get to this Thanos page, but um, it's a lot that they can't do because, of, like you said before, you know what I mean? It was just like you know Falcon. I different. don't want to see Falcon out there just whooping the ass like that when all he got is wings. Well, I mean, it, it is, you know, different things, you know, like I say, um, just like um, Wanda, she's supposed to be Magneto's daughter too. Yep. And she got the power to say no more mutants, and she supposed to been put hands on Thanos. She supposed to stop him from doing whatever, you know what I'm saying? So she's a whole major um, level mutant. So I mean, it's different things, and you know, like I say, they ain't got the rights to do everything for us, the characters too. So you know, I just wanted to let you know on that fact because you was bringing it up a lot, and I didn't want you to be ignorant on it. But yeah, she was definitely, she was. Um, it was called the Red Room. Yeah, you know all right. Well, saying, so. I know, I know that she has more power, but I don't understand why they don't give her more power. Now they're talking about still, even though it's been ten years now, they're still saying that they're going to do uh, her own solo movie. I mean, you look at this SJW stuff; it's not selling. And then you got to look at Disney owns Marvel too, so look how they messing up Star Wars. Let's hope they don't mess it up like they did Star Wars, man, and just keep it. You know what I'm saying? Real, man. I mean, because I love the first two Spider-Man, I mean, the first three Spider-Mans, but the, um, Andrew Garfield, and so he was talking about the actor, mm -hmm. I didn't ever feel him. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And that's just how they go. Yeah, I just wasn't feeling him. I, like you said, everybody kept saying the Spider-Man 3 was just horrible. It wasn't horrible. They're just making stuff up. No, man. no, no. No, you, no. You no. may have not liked it as you good know, as the yeah, first two, but it wasn't horrible. And the new Star Wars movies... No. I'm with you. Too much SJW stuff. Yeah. And, so, and, and know, those comic you know, books aren't selling. You're right. They're having to cancel a lot of those comic books because, well, um, when you put too much SJW stuff in there, nobody will read that shit. That's not what you want in your comic uh -huh. book. No. Let me ask you this. What you think about what happened with Genuine um, refusing a kiss from a man? that dresses up as a bitch, but not a bitch. You know what I mean? Well, and here's the thing. Uh, he, they got upset about that, yet when you go off and... If a man tried to kiss a woman, they would have said he was being too aggressive and they tried to put him in jail. So this... Bill Cosby, case in point. Right. But yet this man doesn't want to kiss this man dressed up as a woman, and he's somehow yeah. this word that means nothing, which is transphobic. That word means nothing. We keep putting power to words that mean nothing. I keep telling people, just like that word coon, the coon word means nothing, yet people fear it. Someone calling you a fag and you're straight, you fear it because this person calls you this word. Sellout, self-hater, color struck. Any of these words are used to make you not feel what you feel or think what you think. Exactly. Get that word. And you're right there, Tommy. I'm going to let you get to your next guest, man. I just wanted to share the good news and just, you know, put you up on the game. And, you know, like I say, keep it real with you, man. Um, mm -hmm. If you can, you know what I'm saying? I'm Sean Wilson. You know what I'm saying? Um, I got a product line and I want to get up, get up hope with you, man. And, um, you know, do what I'm supposed to do, man. Link up and make a, um, you know, black caucus. Uh, other than Matt Donald's, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, let's do it, bro. Email me at tj at yourworldmyviews.com. I want to thank you so much for the phone call. And glad you off that paperwork, bro. Uh, we need to start throwing um, parties for brothers who get off child support, who have made it through. We need to, I, all you brothers who are coming up on, on your child support end date, y'all need to email me because uh, not only do we need to, Congratulate those brothers who made it through that 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 infinity gauntlet. But we need to also make more people aware that we need to shut this shit down. 
We need to fight against this. First off, if you think about child support, it's unconstitutional. It's unconstitutional. 90 seconds. Crap. So I got 90 seconds to talk about something, then I'm going to answer you guys' phone calls. So hold on a second. But um, you think about what men go through and they refuse to try and put women through it. I got, uh, what's it? Eight more years. I got eight more years and then I'm, I'm out. You should never be paying child support longer than you, uh, as long as you've been adult. You should never have been paying child support longer than you've been a lot. A lot of people been paying child support um, over half of their whole entire life. Somebody said college. I no. I, look, now, if I pay, if I if I'm forced by the, the United States government to pay you money every month, your college should come out of that. Y'all may not like what I say, but I'm going to say it. If I got to pay you a monthly amount, I'm not giving you shit extra. I'm not giving you shit extra on their birthday is coming out of that money. I already gave you on a Christmas is coming out of that money. I already gave you any other fucking thing they have. It's coming out of that money. I already gave you bitch. Cause if I don't give you that check, I go to jail. Now you expecting me to give you more than that. No women are women are assholes. I give you a check every month. Why the fuck I'm going to give you a check one month and then uh, buy a birthday gift? You buy it. What about our school clothes? You buy it. You got a check this month. Everything that Uncle John need, oh baby. We having some fun tonight. Everything that kid needs you should pay for it out of that monthly allowance that you get. You can't go to your damn job and get a motherfucking check and then tell them your birthday up. Give me something else. You can't go to your job every damn week and, and tell them that they owe you some more money on top of that. Right. And they get the right to kids off taxes. Well, we don't. So fuck them. Don't let women try to make you feel bad. Well, you should buy your kid. I ain't buying them shit. You get a check every month, and if I miss that check, I go to jail. Fuck you. 204, caller, you are on the air. Talk to me. Hey, Tommy, this is um, Alan from Canada. I go by the name of Stereo. I talked to you about almost a year ago. I was the one that talked to you about uh, why do you think divorce is uh, still at the 50% mark. How are you today? I'm doing well. Talk to me. What's your question? Uh, I have two questions. I'll just make them real quick. Uh, first question is, I want to know, why do you think the music of the past, including bands like bands and solo artists like Led Zeppelin and James Brown, seem to sound better in quality than the music that we have today? And the second uh, question is, who do you think is one of the best black actors out today? And I'll just give you a, just a quick list. Chadwick, Denzel, Lawrence Fishburne, Samuel L. Jackson, Eddie Murphy, Don Cheadle. There you go. And, um, I'll stop the you right there. And Anthony Mackie. I, I'll stop you right there. Don Cheadle, because if you look at his work prior to, like he sucks in um, the Marvel stuff because he's too old for it. He don't look right. Um, right. But if you look at all of his work before, Don Cheadle's an, as a... Very diverse. Yes, he's an awesome actor. I love Don and what made me fall in love with Don Cheadle was his work on a movie called Talk to Me. Okay. When he I'll did Talk to up. Me, I, I'm not go look up that. Talk to Me and then go look at his performance as um as um Miles Davis. Oh, he, I didn't see that, but I I was talking about when he did Sammy Davis Jr. in the Rat Pack. Oh yeah, yeah, the Rat Pack. In yeah. the Rat Pack, he killed it. So uh, and uh, you, 
and yeah, and then you wanted to know um, what was the second? What was the second part of it? You said best actor, and there was what? Uh, uh, and then the uh, the other one was the why is the music of the past seem better? Like James Brown and Led Zeppelin and, and all these other bands in the past seem to be have better quality music than the music that's coming out today. Oh, unless the music coming out today, you have to look at uh, the underground. Like James Brown's music still resonates today and it fits so well with anything. You could do a James Brown song or put it into some sort of rap, you've almost got a hit. Um. One, because they use analog instead of digital, so you can feel the music. Two, because okay. a lot of the old music wasn't about it wasn't about a gimmick. Now the music today is just about a gimmick. It's about a quick buck. They're not trying to make it last. So that's why the music uh, industry is in the, is on fire. No one can really make it unless you uh, have a hit single and all that. And even now, like all these, like the only person that seems to have any staying power to me is maybe Bruno Mars. Like, like, you, then, he, well, if you think about like it, like, James Brown, anyway. Well, look at the girl, um, the one who does the Bodak Yellow or whatever her name, Cardi B. That that's really a chick okay. you want to listen to, like, really? I don't dance, nah, I mean, money move, baby, bloody too. Like, this is stupid. That that's just the dumbest line when she said, "I wear red bottoms, call them bloody shoes." Like, what? And that's why you got these dumbasses running around talking like that. That's why that girl came over and was talking about some period dog, period dog. And then she was a rapper and she let me hear her stupid ass music. And I was like, Jesus Christ, you think this sounds good? Most of the music that's out today is just for retards. You actually had to think a little bit with old school music. That's why I love the 80s. You had to think a little bit. The stuff now is just stupid. Stupid and repetitive. What about Rick James? Rick, seventies were a a seventies. I'd say late sixties, seventies, and eighties. You had Renaissance guys back then because you remember Prince could play every damn thing. Rick Rick James could play every damn thing. Michael Jackson could play a bunch of fucking instruments and produce songs and, and arrange music. Now, there's a lot of people don't even write their own damn lyrics. They don't know how to play an instrument. Look at TLC. There's a bunch of people that couldn't do shit. TLC can't do anything. They had to have the producers, the right, everybody behind them made them. Back in the day, Kurt Cobain. Well, think about Kurt Cobain. That was all him and his band. They just needed somebody to put the music out. That's not what we have now. Okay. So you don't think we'll see like a James Brown or a Led Zeppelin type of band coming out anytime soon? Like living, well, living color is still around, but it just I just don't know if there's even a even room for it. That's why I do appreciate Bruno Mars, though. Um, I just don't think that there's any room for people like that, like. They think J. Cole is the best thing going. And it's like, yeah, it's just, I would love for music to go back to where it it mattered. And maybe, and there's still some diamonds in the rough out there. You can find it. It's just, you have to look through so much. So let me ask you this. Who would you collaborate more with? Would you collaborate more with a, a band like the Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, and James Brown and Elvis, or would you collaborate with uh, contemporaries right now, like Jay-Z and Kanye? No, nah, I'd rather... you, you got to understand, I'm one of those people who, um, like, uh, there's a movie called That Thing You Do, where the one okay. white... You ever seen that movie? With Tom Hanks? Yes. Okay, I've seen bits of it, but... Uh, this is a beautiful they, movie, uh, but at the end of it, the one group. white boy who was their drummer, all he wanted to do was play with this dude named Dale Paxton. And Dale Paxton was an old um, jazz guy. But all he wanted to do was work with him. He didn't want to work with the people of his age. I'm like that. 
Okay. I have a, a reverence. Like, I'm one of the guys who, like, if you talk to some basketball players and they know everything about the guys who came before them and they respect it, I'm one of those guys. I know everything about the guys oh. who came before me and I respect them. So I look up to them. I think if you really give a shit about music, you will look up to the people who brought you there. When you don't, you just look at it as a vehicle for you and you don't pay attention to it. It's the same way with these movies. People who have a reverence for the source material tend to make a better movie. People who don't, yeah. don't. So you think the Russo brothers did a good job because they have a, their finger on the pocket with the source material for Marvel and DC doesn't. That's right. DC understands that DC is more dark, but what DC doesn't understand is that even if you're going to be dark, like DC is shit on dialogue. What they don't understand is the reason why Batman worked is because the dialogue was great. Even though Batman was dark, it was great because the dialogue was awesome. If you go and watch the first Batman and the second one, the dialogue in those is just, it's this beautiful dialogue. The way it's written is beautiful. The second one was basically a referendum on the George Bush era and the whole uh, Patriot Act. A lot of people didn't get that. That's what that was, the, the entire movie. Right. So, like, like you liked how they Marvel did Thanos, though, right? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is that it, bro? That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. I will uh, call in another time so other callers can get on. You're doing a great job. You're a great father. Love you, man. Ciao. Love you too, brother. Thank you so much, man. Hey, that I like good calls like that. Um, you look at no, no, no. It wasn't a, uh, against communism. If you look at what he did. Look at what they did. The whole part where he was talking about how Batman used everybody's cell phone against them. That's what was happening under the Bush years. You're taking away freedoms from people and claiming it's to stop terrorism. That was 100% what that movie was about. Let's go to 601. 601, talk to me. Hey, you Ben? Yes, sir. Hey, Tom. Oh, okay. I, I got a question for you, man. I was uh, I was up late talking to my friend the other night, and you know, I'm I, I think a lot. It's the best thing that occurred. What I'm curious, like, uh, what if it's possible? I I I put it like that. If it is at all possible, mm -hmm. how would you how would you bring how would you bring people together? You know what I mean? Because me, I, to me, it's all to me. I see a lot of stupidity. You know, races, genders, ages, everything. I, mm -hmm. It's just, it's to me, it's stupid. Because when you really break down what they're arguing about, everybody is pretty much arguing over the same, same thing. You know what I mean? If I were to bring but people, you don't to... know really. Okay, how I kill it. Okay, my bad. My no, bad. No, no, no. You're okay. If I were to do something to bring people together. That's why I try to talk on logic and facts. Because if you can talk to people on things that are concrete, then you can easily get, and it's like the whole idea of the lie detector test, a baseline. Human beings, the more they see that they have in common, the more they gravitate towards each other. No matter how you look, no matter what it is that you believe, the things that you have in common bring you closer to any other human being. If you were to talk on facts and logic, you can get more people to be together. If you notice, because I speak a lot on facts and logic, my audience is typically diverse. Because even if you don't like me or you don't like but black I people or you don't like white people, I will say something that you can agree with. Uh, but is your audience really diverse? You know what I mean? Because really, I'm, I'm almost willing to guarantee if your audience goes out talking the way that they talk in the chat room and the way you and I talk, I guarantee you at least 90% of your audience going to be called a butthole at some point in their life. Not saying that they actually are, you know, but I'm saying that's, that's going to be the perception of, you feel me? 
Well, if you listen to me and you and, and you like some of the stuff I say, then you're probably suffering from assholers. It's the brother of Aspergers. Right. See, assholers. <laughs> <laughs> the assholer right. syndrome. That's what we have. Because what it is is the world has become so PC that you can't tell people the truth. And that's one thing I wrestle with, that I must tell people what they want to hear. I can't say the truth. Like with me, if a woman tells me my underarm stink, I would just go take a bath. If she tells me my breast stink, I would go gargle. I literally would never get mad. I want to know what bothers you so I can clean it up. But the majority of human beings don't want you to tell them what bothers you. They want you to say that it's all gravy. The only time you can say what bothers another human being is if they say they don't like it. Then you can say it. And that's crazy. Yeah. I, I just, I don't know. It irritates me. I'm, when, I find, when I find something that I, I, that I feel like challenges me, I can't let it go. It's, it's, like a, it's like an obsession or a compulsion, you know, and I can't let it go until I figure out a solution. Mm-hmm. And when talking to people, it's like, okay, how do I get past your perception? Because that's what's screwing you up. Yes. It's your perception. I mean, you, you know, how do you get, how do you get past? I wish you could just write me down a formula or something and, you know, send me on my way. Just, just don't tell me that it's impossible. I don't think it's impossible to bring people together. I think you got to start. Listen. The reason why kids want to go to Disney World and Disneyland is because you make it seem like a great place to go. Not everybody goes there. And I would say the percentage of the country that's ever been to either one of them is small. But the percentage of the country that want to go there is large of children. Why? Because of the perception of the place. I thought that I could do that with Soto Nation. Have a perception of the place be. We don't agree. We actually disagree. But when people watch us debate, it's actually fun to watch it. That's what I was thinking. It's fun to watch them because they debate, and at the end of it, they walk away and they shake hands. Like they don't hate each other. To me, that's awesome. I love watching the, 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 a, a football game where they're basically out there fighting to the death, and at the end of it, they all hug and walk off. That's the way it's supposed to be. When you ask them, do you hate each other? No, no. We just disagree on this point, and I disagree passionately at times. But I don't hate this person because there are places where we do agree. Just today we decided to talk on the places we don't. And if you could get, like, with the people who dislike me, every one of them keeps saying the same shit over and over again. You took a shower with your daughter, which they heard me say when I when she was six when I told the story, when she was five when it happened. And in the story I'm telling a joke like I normally tell about everything else, about just trying to tell people, look, it comes a time in which even if you don't see it, you better pay attention because you will always look at your kid as a kid. Your kid is growing up, though. I still refer to my 12-year-old as a baby. She's still a baby to me. I still refer to her as that way. And I know some grown men who refer, one of my exes, every time she would go to her father's house, she sat in her father's lap. She was 35. But that was her daddy. And that man turned her into a little girl every time she went around him. But you got these fucking perverts who (laughs) never had a father in their life, who never had anything, who would concentrate on Tommy's Tommy's a child molester. Well, if this happened at five and my fucking child is 12 now, she's seven. That, I mean, excuse me, that's seven years that have passed. Why would you keep on talking about this if you really gave a shit about children being molested? But they don't because what they're doing yep. is saying Tommy's telling the truth about this. Because if what I was saying was so wrong, what would they do every day? They would pull up a video I did the day before and show you how I was wrong, show you how I lied. Yep. That's what they keep saying. Tommy said that he want all black people dead. But they can't show you a video in which I said that this week, last week, last month, last year, the year before that. They can't. They pull up a video in which I'm talking after these people that sent somebody to my grandmother's house. What I say in response is so wrong at that point. But 
Same people who say, you shouldn't talk about that person. That's somebody's kid. We'll sit and talk about my kid all damn day. They won't talk about the issues. That's the problem we have because we live in a society right now that says, if you can't beat somebody on the issue, beat them on the mudslinging. And we have to look at ourselves because we're the people who sat there and watched Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton slang mud. We watch all these political people not have real debates on issues, but talk about who fucked who, who cheated on who. Stupid shit. If we started saying yep. we are no longer in the TMZ era, we're no longer in this. If you want to read TMZ, go to TMZ, but you don't bring TMZ to your motherfucking politics. I don't give a shit how many yep. people suck Bill Clinton's dick. If he was doing a good job, that's none of my business. Now, he's currently getting his dick sucked, so Bruh. I can see how that would be a problem. <laughs> No, I can see how that could be somewhat of a yeah. problem. But if he let somebody suck his dick back when he was in college and now you're going to bring it up, it's just like all those people talking about Bill Cosby. I don't give a fuck what he did to you back in 1968 and owed you one. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. I you mean, I, I find myself just like, just, oh, go, I'm ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, you got it. I find myself being conscious with my daughters and stuff, man, because... Like, you know, they, my daughter is seven, my son. No, my son is seven, my daughter is five. Mm -hmm. And, you know what I mean? They like to do stuff with me when I get home. Like, I'm out on the road right now. And we out more in the yard and stuff. You know, I just let them, you know, drive the tractor. Because I remember when I was growing up, that's how my, my daddy and my uncle them used to do me. You know, they let, they put us in the car, let, let us sit in their lap. We steer while they pressing the pedal. Yes, sir. But I found myself, you know, watching around because I didn't want my neighbors to to think nothing about my kids riding in my lap, even though you can clearly see my hands. I had my hands out. Let You know you, how you play with your kids. You know it's what I mean? crazy, it, isn't no, it? You know there was no malintent. But. No, it's crazy. I actually said, had people tell yeah. me my daughter was too old to be sitting in my lap when she older than three. Who came up with this? Come on, bro. <laughs> you can't care no more, man. You you can't show no affection to your kids. No, and but mothers can. So uh, the, the front of a magazine had a big old grown ass woman breastfeeding a five year old. No, no, was he five? Y'all remember that? Was that nigga? I think he. I think he was older than that. I think he's like ten. There's a a, a on, cover man. of a magazine where this bitch is breastfeeding. Him. But again, you remember women can fuck the shit out of the high school students, and they get three months of um. What is it? Three months suspended sentence. A man does it. He get 20 years. These mothers are going to their motherfucking prom with their sons wearing um, ass out clothes. Somebody sent me a, um, a, a photo of a woman going to her um, her child's eighth grade middle school dance. She took him. Do you know that bitch is wearing a, a dress with like no bottom and a see through? It's a see through dress with like drawers on. Man. Nobody had a problem with this. Crazy, man. So back, they don't I'm, consider none of that child abuse. My poor woman breastfeeding a ten year old. They don't consider none of that child abuse. Nope. I, I'll show. I'll show it to the audience right now while while they're on the line. I'm gonna show it to the audience what this bitch wore to her ninth grade, her son's ninth grade dance, and and this is okay. Guys, take a look at your screen. That's what the woman wore to her son's eighth grade dance, a middle school dance. I don't know if he's in the eighth grade because he's very small. Look what she wrote. Yeah. I'm his date. Look at my Amarion. Amarion Cardenzo spring ball. That's what she wore. Wow. <laughs> That's what Man, she wore. Get out of here, bro. To the middle school. Do you think that that, like, on a, on a I say semi-pseudo-serious type, do you think that it's actually something that's really stopping people's brains from developing? Yes. Fully? Oh, I've been said. I, I was the one who came up with this. I, I When I was uh, in school, I actually had brought this up after talking. I said, I honestly believe that women's brains stop at the age in which they first get pregnant. 
Huh. I ain't never heard that one before. Mm-hmm. If a woman, have you ever noticed when a woman has a baby at 16, her mentality is 16, even by the time her kid turns 16. And by that time, when her kid turns 16 and she's 32, her kid will be her best fucking friend. Right. I see what you're saying. So why do you get along with this 16 year old so, so well? Is- why are you competing with this 16 year old so, so well? You can talk to a lot of girls who um, mother had them between, before the age of 20. A lot of them will tell you. Mama end up fucking my boyfriend. Mama be walking around my friends trying to show them how she's still fine. I see what you're saying. So, I mean, what do you do when you got a nation basically full of retards? <laughs> hey. No offense to any. No, I agree opinion. with you. No, it's, yeah, no it's offense so to any retard because at least the retard got an excuse. These are these regular people don't have an excuse because they all claim that they're intelligent, like the bitch who was a damn doctor, but she's still up there. And I'm telling you, in that video, I shit you not. She's cutting at the woman's stomach doing a liposuction. While she's doing it, the song in the background is, your price is way too high. You need to cut it. Then, not only that, the woman she was operating on while she was doing this and uploading it to YouTube, the woman came in. Six weeks before her wedding, she wanted to get the liposuction for her wedding so she could look her best. The woman ended up not getting married because to this day, the woman has um, the, the woman has brain damage because what she did to her damaged her brain to where she cannot walk or speak. You went in just for something as simple as liposuction. And this so-called educated black woman thought that this was a normal behavior. And these are the people that the government... And our court system is telling us they should raise your children by themselves and you should send them money. The government knows exactly what they're doing. Well, see, that's on the, see, and I'm glad you hit it right on the head. Because in my opinion, while we busy being mad at each other, you know what I mean? And I'm sure I can't, I'm not, you know, that deep into the literature. And stuff, but I'm sure it's somebody that said that about you know your government can have you turning on each other and they robbing you the whole time. Yep. You know what I mean? Which I want to use the segue over to the um the Starbucks thing I wanted to talk to you about. I did disagree with you on your um. I mean when I posted on that, I disagreed with the premise that you know that was just everyday occurrence because I believe that I I believe everything is getting wrapped up so tight together to where you can't tell the difference. You know what I mean? I don't believe that that was, I know, I believe they did do it off a race, but I don't believe it was like a, uh, the everyday race thing. You know what I mean? You had uh, the, the chick, Susan LeBeck, I think that was her name, who got three, who was awarded $3 million in punitive damages from McDonald's. Nobody said a thing. You know what I mean? He, and the only reason she only got the 600000 was because the judge knocked it down. You mean, wait a minute, is that the woman with, who spilled the coffee on herself? Right, that's her. And it's like nobody said a thing. And it's like, okay, now when you see this coming back, because our court operate on technicality, hers was the coffee was too hot. Not that it was hot, but that it was too hot. That 180 to 190 degrees is too hot. So when you see that coming back, and they're running off of, and their, their technicality is racism. It's like, okay, can you, Well, I didn't like that either. I, I didn't like that, though, because, listen, I didn't like that because here's the thing. Anytime a woman is awarded a lot of money, nobody says anything. Have you ever noticed that? When a woman is awarded right. a lot of money in a divorce, yep. nobody says anything. When a woman is awarded a lot of money in child support, nobody says anything. When a woman's ordered a lot of yep. um, awarded a lot of money in anything, we accept it as that's what she was supposed to get. But dudes are getting out of jail, let out of jail, because they were falsely incarcerated. They get out, and the the law will state, well, if you've had a felony before, and I don't know if you knew this, if you had a felony before and you were falsely arrested you are not eligible to be compensated for being falsely arrested. That's the law. Come on. This is the stupidest on, law in history. But who's fighting against it? Nobody. I say Nobody. it now, you guys will hear it, and then everybody will walk on with their day. 
The only men who give a shit about what's happening is when it happens to them. And even yep. them, they don't do anything. There's no reason why Tom Cruise shouldn't be out here talking about how fucked up child support is. There's no reason that Jamie Foxx shouldn't be out here talking about how fucked up child support is. T.I., um, all of these men, but they won't because they fear the next woman won't fuck them. So they will go through hell, and I know because I've done it. We'll go through hell just to be liked for a woman. Yep. Because actually, and like I said, remember I told you, I believe everybody winds up having the same problem. There was actually a cop, a police officer, and I'm not fond of police. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't hate them. I don't have no disdain for them. I just don't want them around me. Mm-hmm. You know, and I don't call them for any, any cops that might be listening. I don't call <laughs> So you ain't got to worry about it. But I, a cop sued Starbucks for the exact same thing that LeBeck did. He burned himself, got third-degree burns because the, the top came off of the coffee. They gave him absolutely nothing. Mm. Absolutely nothing. So what happened to Bag to Boo? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like you're in the same boat with me. You just can shoot me when you get mad. You know what I mean? You can you can take your anger out on me, but you're in the same boat with me. They don't care about you either. Somebody somebody brought something up in the chat room. They were talking about Scarface. Scarface, my we call Superman Scarface, and I cool. But every time I uh, ask him to come on to talk about his child support issues, he says he won't do it because he's afraid of what the mothers will do if he does. But he wanted to come on the show to talk about mm-hmm. Donald Trump and how racist Donald Trump is. And I was like, huh? So you will come on my show to talk about how racist Donald Trump is. You won't talk about how fucked up it is that you couldn't leave the country because your baby mama had you on child support. You won't talk about how fucked up it is that you've been to jail several damn times. You won't talk about how fucked up it is that your money has been dwindled away by these hoes. This is nothing you will talk about. That don't make sense. You don't now know Donald you Trump break, personally. You come together if I don't know something is wrong with you. Well, think about it. He don't know Donald Trump personally, and Donald Trump hadn't did anything in his life. But those damn women actually have, and he know them personally. Yep. I mean, who was that? This is the only way you can all. Uh, uh, it was somebody that was talking about Mandela and all of them. And they were talking about, you know, how the only way they was able to actually resolve anything or get anything done is they all had to sit at the table and it, and everybody had to just basically confess what they had done or the part they had played. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it's like, if we ain't, if I can't even tell you, man, time I'm going through it on this child's court, if I can't even tell you that, you'll walk around the rest of the time thinking you're by yourself. Very true. That's why and I, I think that's how so many men is walking around now. By they, they think they by themselves. And that's why I speak the way I speak. Because I'm like, come on. If I don't talk about it, and I hate being the person to talk about it, and Packer Girl just sent me a message, and she said, feminist Twitter have still not apologized to Reuben Foster for the fact that his girlfriend, a black woman, by the way, came out and lied and said that he did her wrong, that he assaulted her, and it was a lie. None of the feminist feminists have never, ever, ever, and let me say this again, ever, ever come out and been against unfair sentencing which is huge unfair Uh when it comes to men and um, men and our reproductive rights men get nothing men get the shaft without the good soundtrack (laughs) they just straight get the shaft yes sir you (laughs) Ain't no soundtrack, nigga. You ain't get no soundtrack. You ain't get no bell bottoms. Nope. You just getting shaft. <laughs> yup. Hey, I want to tell you, if my phone dropped, man, I'm not mad and I'm not hanging up on you. I'm um, I'm actually rolling right now. So yeah, right, I'm about to hang up on you anyway because I'm going to try to get two more calls in. But I'm going to give you the last word. I think it's going out, bro. Oh. What? If you can hear me, man. I can hear you. If you can hear me, I'm going to call back in. 
Now, I can hear you. All right, hey, I'm going to do another show tomorrow. I haven't done a call-in show in a while, and these call-in shows are pretty good. This was a call-in to talk about whatever you want to, and you guys have brought good uh, discussions to the table, and I just really enjoyed the Marvel discussion. I love that these men are saying what they're saying. I like when the man called in, and he said, look, hey, I'm finally off this damn merry-go-round of child support. He should be happy. There should be men. We can sit up there, and these women can throw themselves baby showers. We need to throw... um, Grown showers, like my kid is grown. My kid is grown. They out the door. The nigga right here, sing it. Six seven eight. What's up? Six seven eight. Yeah, the trolls are scared. They did all that. I won't answer my phone. I'm answering my phone. Ain't got shit to say. Seven one three. Call you on the air. Yeah. Hey. Hey, what's up? Hi. No, much. Talk to me. What do you want to speak about? What? Yes, sir. Talk to me. Hey, this is, this is Pete the Pirate. <laughs> oh, what up, Pete? What's happening, man? Uh, no, nothing much. I can hear myself in the background hey, a little bit. Really? Yeah, but um, we're good now. Go ahead. All right. This is probably better. This is probably better. Go ahead. Dude, dude, what the hell is up with Sweetwood Mac kicking out Lindsey Buckingham, the best guitarist, one of the best guitarists in rock history? Did you know that? What happened? I know you like Fleetwood Mac, dude. They fucking fired uh, Lindsey Buckingham. You, going on I'm, tour that's what I'm, I'm hearing you, but I'm like, why? Dude, that's what I'm saying. I, I think there were some issues with... Uh, he was having issues with them, and then he handed it towards uh, Stevie Nicks. Oh. And I was like, dude, I was going to go see that, but I won't go see them without him. Hmm. I have to read. I didn't hear about that. That's weird. I, I don't know. I just knew that you uh, you got into him. You yeah. were into them. Yeah, I, I don't understand. what I got to read and see what, what happened on that one. That's crazy. Anyway, man, another thing I wanted to say is uh, they were talking about, you know, lonely, loneliness and men and all that stuff and what happened. You know, I got seven more years till my party. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of down today. And we got to anyway, look at it that way, saying, though, bro. But we have to look at it that way. You literally put a man in position uh, that if he this, can't, if something goes wrong and he can't afford this payment, he can be arrested. Dude. It is fucked. It is fucked me up, man. It's 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 crazy. It just sucks. I mean, I love my boy and all that, and I'll do anything for him. But it's just the hell that she's put me through has just mm-hmm. been, man. It's fucking beat me down. But I'm all good. And that's I'll, what, I'll it, like it. you said, you love your kid, and they use that against us. They they use the fact oh. that they know we love the kid. And have you noticed when they want to do something? And they tell you, well, you need to get the kid. And it could be a time in which, well, you had already had something planned because it wasn't your weekend. If you say no, you're a bad person. But if it's a weekend, oh, yeah. you're supposed to get them. But she got some kind of fucked up plans. She'll just let you know, well, they got plans this week and I'm planning on doing this. Like my daughter's mom was like, well, I know you normally get her in the summer, but I got plans to take her here for a couple of weeks. So I haven't seen her since right. Christmas. Right. This is my summer, but you choose the time I have to take her where you think you need her to go. And it's not a question. It's a statement. You're just letting me know. Exactly. And if it went the other way around, they would fucking bitch you out. So, you know, I mean, yep. I, it's the same thing with mine. I mean, it's like I'll say, you know, I'm, I want to take my uh, kid to Austin and see my parents. And she's like. Oh, I already had something planned for that weekend. And it's like, because her family's all here. And it's just like, you know, I don't get, I don't know. It just, it just mm-hmm. sucks. I mean, you know. Man, and it's, it's irritating. Anyway. And if you just decide, you know, fuck this. I'm not going to keep fighting you. Again, you're the bad guy. How does that make any sense that I'm not supposed to spend the rest of my life fighting you? Why can't we get along? I know. It's just, uh, 
and, and I know it's affecting him too. And yep. it's just it just sucks to see him have to deal with that shit. You know, it's just anyway. Yeah, you put it, the kid in a totally, fucked up you know, spot. It, beat, it beats men down. It breaks them down. It's just uh, people don't understand that. And uh, look and at how many get, of us you know, commit I mean, suicide. Just, Look at how many of us commit suicide because we can't pay the child support or we can't pay the alimony. Things that they don't have to worry about. Women don't have to worry about not being able to pay something. Somebody will come in and help them. They gave this one woman, what was it, $26,000 because she said that her kids didn't have a good fucking Chris, wouldn't have a good Christmas without it. Some jackass from the group Pearl Jam, Eddie Vedder, gave 10 grand. Yeah. The fuck? You've never given ten grand to Jesus. any male causes, and you're a man. He is a fuck. I, I like Pearl Jam, but I can't stand it better. That dude's a fucking. I was the, a huge the, Pearl one Jam fan. One of the worst fan. liberals. That, I was a huge Pearl Jam fan. That? I was a huge Pearl Jam fan. Oh yeah. And to, when he did that, and people will tell you, when he did that, I don't fuck with Pearl Jam anymore. I don't fuck with Eddie Vedder. That's some fucked up shit you did. You gave this crackhead mother yeah. who got a bunch of kids by a bunch of people ten grand for for one sitting at Christmas. Ten grand for Christmas? It, it sucks. I mean, it's like, I mean, I give my girl, you know, my my ex. I can't even call it my girl. You know, like six hundred dollars a month, and uh, she's making sixty grand a year. Mm. On top of that, then she filed for bankruptcy a year ago because she spent so much fucking money on her credit cards on just bullshit. And it's like, then she comes back to me saying, it's my fault, you know? And I'm like, what the fuck? You know, you, I'm giving you... <laughs> you, it's, you dug your own hole, you know? And then she's wanting more and more and more. And it's just like, dude, it's fucking wearing me down. It's just, uh, anyway... Yeah, it, it, crazy, and that's why. Then that's why you were saying, you know, men are. I mean, I'm not. I thought about suicide, but I'm not going to do it. I mean, I know you've talked about it before, but I mean, it's just like, you know, you get to some days where it's just like, fuck, I'd rather not even fucking be here. Thank you. You know, then, but then it's like, you know, you do it for. I mean, my son, I just could never do that. You know, but it's just sometimes it gets to that point. It's just fucking. I'm, I'm with you. I, I talk about it all the time. That they don't sympathize. I talk about it all the time. This past week, I battled so much with depression and thoughts of suicide. It's crazy. I literally had to just yeah. stay high as hell to not kill myself because I'm sitting up here thinking, I don't want to keep going through this shit. Life ain't fucking fun. And yeah. I know it ain't supposed to be a party every damn day, but I shouldn't wake up every day and, and, and feel like I'm in Fallujah. Yep. I mean, I had, I mean, yeah, I mean, the last two weeks have just been hell, I do. I've been smoking every day, dude, just mm -hmm. to fucking get my mind off it. And, hey. uh, fuck, no wonder, you know, the suicide rate's going up and a lot of stuff. It's just, it's just, I don't know. And look at how often but, us uh, men are killing uh, ourselves. And there's no outcry to save the men. There's nothing. nothing. There's no outcry at all saying, let's save these men. Yeah, I don't know if you talk, if you have you ever listened to uh, Jordan Peterson. People have conflicted views on on what he says, but uh, you know he talks about loneliness and how that is just as bad. And being alone and, and you know isolating yourself as men do when they get in that situation is just as bad as drinking, you know, doing drugs like hardcore drugs for your body. I mean, it really. I mean, it's unhealthy for your body. I mean, yeah. and, and they in, end up dying younger. You know, I mean, it's just proven studies that isolation, loneliness, and all that that comes from, you know, the situations that the government puts them in, in because of this, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. It, you know, we're dying younger and younger. It's just. Yeah, t if 10 to 15 years younger than women when they die, if it was the other way around, it would be an outcry all over the United States to try to explain why women die 10 to 15 years younger than a man. There would be all kinds of things done to prevent this from happening. But since it's the other way around, there's no outcry at all. Remember, there are more people who die 
from uh, prostate cancer than breast cancer. So why do we only talk about breast cancer? Yeah, um, well, because the effect can, you know, riot, and it's like another group started, and, you know, and, <laughs> you know, just yeah. to say that, you know, when we're not talking about women enough, and, you know, men don't, men don't care, actually, about that stuff as much, you know, they don't, they don't want a group to fucking support them, you know, but it is affecting us, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, somebody well, asked this question. I'll let you answer it. Uh, Bigfoot said, what is the end goal of feminism? Men as slaves only surviving to please and reproduce. What do you think? What is the ultimate goal of feminism? I think, I mean, uh, they just, you know, I really don't have a good answer for that. I mean, the studies show that people, I mean, it's going to drive men away. You know, that's one thing. Studies show that if you're in a relationship with someone or married, that you're more healthy. I mean, just uh, playing the roles, you know, I mean, and they're not roles that you play. I mean, they're natural things that women are more caring. Women are more nurturing. Um Men are, you know, women are more agreeable. Um, men, you know, play their role in the whole thing. And it's just, I think feminism is just going to fuck all that up, you know, mm -hmm. drive men away and just make things worse. And it's, it's, it's the fact that these men, these men are understanding what's going on. They see him what's going on, but still we throw willingly throw ourselves on our swords for what I don't know. And the people who are doing this know this isn't good, know this isn't positive, and know this is doing nothing but causing problems. And yet they're still pushing it. I'll give you the last word. Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, my last word is, uh, you know, I've been isolating myself and, and doing all that, you know, being lonely. And and I've just noticed, you know, I'm, I'm your age. I'm about to turn 43 in uh, June and I've noticed my health declining because of it and it's mm -hmm. just I wanted to point that out you know that you really do people do not need to do that I mean it's uh, you really need to get around people do not isolate yourself you know because this whole system is driving men to do that and uh, it's just getting worse and worse and you know the changes that I need to make are uh because, you know, an idle mind is the devil's playground, that old saying, and it really applies to men. And, it, yeah. it, you know, uh, we can get ourselves in some trouble for not, <laughs> yeah. you know, getting advice from other people and, uh, you know, being in relationships like people should be, you know. Look, my health, so, is, my health is in the toilet right now because of, like you said, yeah. um, I trusted and believed in the words of people who were around me and I realize now that the majority of them were literally just using me for money and as soon as the money went off so did they so one of the worst feelings in the world is to know that you were there to help people when they needed you and they're all gone everybody mm -hmm. I helped they're gone there's literally no one left yeah I mean they're saying that you know, that it's just, uh, I mean, it just wears you down. I mean, if you're, if you're like that, you know, you're going to get used. Um, and, uh, unfortunately sometimes being nice and, and caring like that doesn't, doesn't fly. That's mm -hmm. unfortunate, you know, and, but you know, the whole health thing, it re you know, the stress, isolation, depression, I mean, it just really, really affects your body more than we know. And, uh, and when men are alone, they don't take care of themselves as much, you know, and it's just, um, so I'm starting to realize that I'm trying to turn things around, but, uh, I know you talk about that a lot and that was just uh, the point of my call. Hey, I want to tell you, brother, try to keep your head up. I know it's difficult and I wouldn't even try to make it sound like it's easy. I know it's hard. Uh, for the last week I've just been like, 
it's a chore for me to get out of bed. And that's me being 100% that's honest. That's exactly. I just want to stay in the bed someday, all fucking day. It's just like, I know I can't do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think for at least an hour a day, I, I cry. Um, it's life is just difficult now. It's not like I have a bunch of joy to look forward to. And that's what I hate that, you know, you're getting up just to try and get through another 24 hours. Not that there's going to be anything good. You're just trying to make it through a day. And what kind of fucking life is that? Mm-hmm. That every day you wake up, you're just trying to make it through that day so you can make it to another one. Not anything constructive. Right. You don't expect anything good to happen to you. You just want to be able to have a day where more shit doesn't pile on you. Yep. Yep. I mean, it's, uh, I think it's also, I mean, I used to not be like that. I think it's also once I, turned like got in my late thirties and early forties. It's like, uh, you really start to realize that, you know, time's limited and, you know, you gotta, I don't know. It's just, uh, it just seems weird. It's just that, that time that this age, you know, it's just really gotten bad. I always thought earlier in my life that, you know, shit would be better. And I guess that's part of the reason for depression. Too. Yeah, you know how many times I wish I could go back to being a kid why I didn't give a fuck about women the worst thing that ever happened to me in life was that I the, the, the love or like of women I can't think of anything else that causes me problems dead ass yeah I mean but it's a natural thing but it's a, it's a double edged sword you know I mean it's just um, yeah, I'm in the same boat, man. Hmm. And it, and what makes women so cold is they watch the shit that they do to men, and it doesn't affect them at all. Yeah. The manipulation is so much higher. Uh, whenever they feel like shit's not going their way, they I have, will, mm-hmm. I mean... I'll tell you this before I go. My ex girl, I'll yeah. tell you this before I go. go my, ex, my ex-girlfriend, who not only broke up with me, but blocked me so I couldn't contact her after she just decided she didn't want to be with me. And she decided she didn't want to be with me four hours after telling me she wanted to have a family and children with me. Literally four hours later. She Damn. broke up with me, blocked me, and wouldn't contact me. She contacted me yesterday, sent me a message, said, hey, how are you doing? Then she said, I'd like to see you this week. Then after that, she said, I also need my rent paid and some money to go shopping. She texts me that. (laughs) Swear to God. Jesus. I mean, that's just cold thinking. I I just, I couldn't believe it. I said, this was my girlfriend. She literally came to me and told me now she'll be a, I can be her sugar daddy, a girl I dated, a girl that I put in front of the audience as my girlfriend literally did that with no problem. You're like, Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm going to do that. Fuck you. I couldn't, but I said, Jesus Christ. Like, really, black bitches ain't yeah. shit. Who would do that? Yeah, well, you know, it, it, it happens with uh, not just black bitches. I know, I know what you mean, though. No, I know. It's just bitches, period. I'm just saying because I've seen the white one do it, too. Especially the white yeah. dudes. I said white That's dudes, y'all get the sh- y'all right get the now. shaft. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, y'all get the shaft because y'all actually are trying to really date these people and marry these people and have families because you saw families. So they have more to fuck you out of. Yeah. It's 
crazy, dude. Man, I wish you the best. And, uh, you know, depression's a bitch. I know I'm going through it now. Anxiety comes with that. And uh, it, it's no joke, man. It's no fucking joke. And, uh, you know, yeah, man. we'll get through this, bro. Well that's, well, that's why we need each other, man. That's why we need to share um, our stories. And I keep telling my stories because I know somebody it resonates with somebody. And even if it doesn't save me, hopefully it'll save them. I can't change the mistakes I've made, but I can hopefully tell this story with so much passion that the next person doesn't go through it. You look at Robin Williams. You look at what's uh-huh. going on with Phil Collins now. Those women fucked Phil Collins up. And this is supposed to be okay? Nobody feels sorry for Phil Collins. Nobody feels sorry for um, w- what happened with Robin Williams. Nobody feels sorry for the guy that I did uh, the story about in North Carolina who, because the baby's mama wouldn't let him see his kid, he walked in front of the cops with a gun and let them shoot him dead because he didn't want to live anymore. Suicide by cop. And that whore got on the news after this and said, I don't know why he did it. And they explained it to him what he said. Oh, and that's weird because he could see the kid anytime he wanted to. We know that's a lie. I know it's a lie and you know it's a lie. But she got in front of the world and said he could have seen the kid anytime. He would have never done that if that was the case. Right, right. God, it's messed up. Anyway, bro. Keep your head up, man. Thank you for calling. You're gonna be the last caller, cause man, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling right now. So I'm, I'm gonna go on and call it a night, man. Thank you so much, and thank you to everybody for joining the show. I try not to talk about this, um, because um, it doesn't help me. It may help the people who are hearing the story. Me being transparent doesn't help me because all the thing happens is niggas listen to the show and then they're going to do a, a 13 week videos about anything I say. So. I don't know. Donations. My man Thomas C said, send in some love your way, Tommy. Jacob H said, thanks for all you do, brother. And Gerald Huya sending a donation. There we go. So a lot of times when people ask, do you feel appreciated? I'm like, I don't think I feel appreciated because I think people will watch me drop them jewels. People will um, see me do show after show after show, trying to help them. And those same individuals the same individuals will talk about how much I helped them and this, that, and the other. But whenever I say something as simple as hit that donate button, you for some odd reason that doesn't happen. My Facebook says I can post in four days. <laughs> well, hopefully at the end of four days, I'll be able to post. All right, guys, thank you so much for um, being here and, and joining me and joining the show. Um, let me see. Mm. Let me see. Uh, I'm going to see if this will make me happy. If I can find this song. I'm going to play this. It's another one of my songs, and then I'm going to get up out of here.
see I be riding through the spot that's hot. Glock cock like a mug, rolling up in the club. It's the old dub, show me love for my thug niggas. Sash out the pen and sipping the gin and trying to find a good piece of pussy to run up in. Where you been, Playboy? I hear stacking the dope, running the streets and yelling, motherfucker, you know. Believe that, see, I'm about to get money like Blue Street. And my nigga, he gon' drop off the Yayo with two beats, two freaks, and they carry my weight like I'm Forte. If they catch some bitches, I'ma straight dip like I'm OJ. On my way to the east side, VI double L ride. Can't forget the E and the D, oh, cause I'm a cheap ride. To the strip to get some ends, pay attention if they coming to missing. I kick your ass, I ain't bullshitting, getting deep. Creeping, strolling, my side is where we going, falling out of control. Yeah, tricks trying to get me, man, it's funny, trying to play me like a dummy. I ain't tripping because it's all for the money. You can't play me, don't try to pay me, please don't hate me because I got money. You can't stop me, don't try to block me, now they got me all for my money. You can't play me, don't try to pay me. Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye.
Okay, I like that. And then I guess I'll play one more before I get up out of here. And that'll be... Um, Say 
and she bringing it my way, nigga. I won't hesitate to hit a bitch in the face like. Yes, that's right. It's an offensive song. It is. But I like it. What else do I have? I'm, I'm getting out of here, man. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, everyone that's out there. Everyone that donated. Uh, let me make sure I read them all. Make sure I didn't miss any. But um, yeah. some more came in. Texas Rattler says, keep your head up. Love you, brothers, bro. Brothers for life. Thank you, Texas Rattler. Don't read out loud. Thank you, dear. Thank you, Denise. Um, Oh, wow. My man, Thomas C., not only hit me with a C note, but he hit me with his phone number too. And he said, I do appreciate you. I know how you feel. If you need to talk, call me. Well, Thomas C., I'm not a big talker, but I text a lot. And what I'm going to do is do this. I just sent you a text with my number in it. Um, and thank you, bro. And then my girl, April Jones says, Hey Tommy, I just wanted to give you something. Love you. Love you back, sis. And, um, like I said, I wouldn't wish what I feel or how I feel on anyone. I wouldn't. Peace.